Hello and welcome to this special telecast where we are literally interrupting our news coverage to stop the press, to hold things, to try to make a notable attempt to get India's attention to something that is happening in a dramatic fashion. Those who can hear music in the midst of noise can achieve great things, said Vikram Sarabhai once, founder of India's space program, who literally started it in his backyard in 1947, the year of our independence. Here we are approaching the 75th anniversary of India's independence and something truly amazing is taking place. You know, we are consumed if you watch television. What's happening right now? Think about the news that's surrounding you on TV. Karoli, some communal riots are taking place in Goraknath. Somebody is trying to enter a temple and oh, he happens to be Muslim and something dodgy is going on. Maybe ISIS links. In elsewhere, we're discussing whether the Azan should have a loudspeaker. If not, then should the Hanuman Chalisa have a loudspeaker? Should we be banning meat shops and alcohol shops during Navratra? This is consuming us as a country. And that's the news we present. The controversy, the issues, the divides, the hate, the anger that make news. It's not news that Will Smith won an Oscar. It is news that he went and slapped someone. That's how the news cycle sometimes works, which is why we need to actually stop it for a second. And generally say stop it. Because our tagline as a news channel is what Vikram Sarabhai once said. News, not noise. Let's put that into perspective. I'm going to walk across what I think is a big space for a, for a TV presenter to have a studio in which you can walk across to our spanking new uh, touch screen here. Puts a life a lot in perspective. Have a look at what you see here. Let's just zoom into the screen, please. Zoom into the screen, not on me. Screen. Let's show the screen, please. And that's just it you see almost nothing. This photograph, a famous photograph in space circles, was taken on the 14th of February in 1990 by Voyager 1, 6 billion kilometers from Earth. Carl Sagan, who was part of the original Voyager team, asked the NASA scientists to turn the camera back to take a photograph of Earth. Famously, this is now known as the pale blue dot. Have a look at what you see in the pale blue dot over here. Just have a look at this. One single pixel, and ironically, we have a company represented here whose name is Pixel. One single pixel in this entire photograph that was taken, this is Earth. Everything that has happened in history, everything that will happen, all the dramas are taking place, whether Sharad Pawar will take over as UPA, will he become president and what's going to happen in Gujarat and whether Ahmed Patel's son will join Congress or not Cong all of this is happening right here. Just look at this. So when we talk about India's golden age, what do we talk about? In our history books, we are told that the golden age was at the time of Chandragupta Maurya, of Ashoka. That was India's golden age. Should we have the audacity, if not the arrogance, the self-confidence to say that perhaps India's golden age is yet to come? And if it is come, coming in our lifetimes, who are the people who are going to pioneer? In which areas is it going to happen? as we get consumed by all that divides us, can we find, I don't know, science and philosophy in this one single pixel that contains all of humanity? Have a look at the next thing on your screens. This is somebody you all recognize. And I made a reference to him at the beginning of the telecast. Vikram Sarabhai. Vikram Sarabhai literally started his propulsion lab in the backyard of his own house in 1947. 20 years later, by about 63, 
we had our first rocket launch. 75, we had our first indigenous rocket launch. That's the time of Indira Gandhi. Now we make cryogenic engines. We can put hundreds of kilograms of payloads reliably into space week on week if we need to. And that's what we want to. And that's why we are having this conversation. Now, this is the legacy that the people that you're going to be watching on this telecast are building up on. Some of you, of course, have seen the TV series on this. So credit to those people who put the TV series across. What did Vikram Sarabhai do? Have a look at this. Let me try to get the next image on our screens. This is 1963. What you're seeing on your screens is a place called Thumba. Thumba, ladies and gentlemen, is just next to Thiruvananthapuram in Kerala. And on the 21st of November in 1963, this rocket was launched right here. 1963. This is a very small rocket based on Russian rocket launch designs. And it took us another 12 years before we could make a truly indigenous rocket. It was called the RH-75 that could put a payload. It was called a sounding rocket, meant, you know, 100 kilometers, 150 kilometers into space to do research. This is where we began. And the conversation today, of course, is going to be about where we have come. So let's have that conversation. Let me just quickly open this up to the next image on your screens. This became infamous. This was a cartoon published in the New York Times of who the New York Times actually felt and has become infamous. I've referred to this several times of who the New York Times actually think are the people sipping their sherry, sitting on their armchairs, which is the elite space club of the world. And they have an Indian with a turban and a dhoti with literally a cow with him trying to enter this. This is the half naked fakirs, okay, the snake charmers image that these guys still are convinced. It doesn't make a difference what all our scientists do. It doesn't make a difference what Sundar Pachai does or Satya Nadella does. This is the racism that continues. And it will only change. It will only change if you're doing things on your own, which is what we are. And this cartoon then gets replaced, ladies and gentlemen, by this cartoon made by an Indian in an Indian publication of literally the whole of India famously hugging now the former ISRO chairman, Mr. K. Sivan. And you all know the context of this because you all saw it live right here on television when our Chandrayaan 2 mission, the lander, didn't go as expected. This is how far we have come. And we have literally billions of miles now to go. So let me take the opportunity of telling you that through the course of the telecast, we are expecting to be joined by Mr. Somnath, Professor Somnath, Dr. Somnath, the current chairman of the Indian Space Research Organization. Dr. K. Sivan, the former chairperson of the Indian Space Research Organization, will also be joining us. And right now, we have on the telecast with, it, with us. Lieutenant General A.K. Butt. Now, General Butt, let me do an introduction, sir, properly this time. Because last time we interviewed you, uh, we didn't get that opportunity. General Butt, ladies and gentlemen, got the Uttam Youth Seva Medal in 2019. He is a person who has led counter-terror operations, including the elimination of 259 terrorists in active combat. He received the Ati Vishist Seva Medal in 2015, the Sena Medal, the Vishist Seva Medal, all of these for his service. And he is now the Director General of the Indian Space Association, founded by, inaugurated rather, by our Prime Minister in October of 2021, just a few months ago. We also have Professor Satya Chakravarti with us. And can we just start showing these gentlemen on our screens, please? Professor Chakravarti, those of you who watch NewsX know him, but let me do the introduction. He is co-founder and advisor to Agnikul Cosmos, Aero Stovilos, X2 Fuels and Galax I. He is the head of the National Center for Combustion, R&D and Professor of Aerospace Engineering at IIT Madras. He has been an accomplished rocket scientist and combustion expert. He won the Young Engineer Award from the Indian National Academy of Engineering in 2003, Young Faculty Recognition Award from IIT Madras in 2009, the DRDO Academic Excellence Award in 2009. 
the Dalmia Hemsi Akram Award in High Energy Materials in 2010. Awais Ahmed, Pixel CEO and founder and as Pixel with a double X. That's a space data company. They're building a constellation of hyperspectral earth imaging satellites and analytical tools to mine insights from that data. The constellation is designed to provide global coverage every 24 hours with the aim of detecting, monitoring and predicting global phenomenon. And just a few days ago, a satellite made by this company, by this team of whom you're seeing a waste sitting at the bottom right of your screens, has launched its first satellite. This has happened through a SpaceX launch mission. And of course, I'm showing a waste will be waiting for uh, Srinath and Professor Chakravarti uh, to be providing the rockets to be putting up his satellite. So on that note, let me introduce Srinath Ravi Chandra, who's the other co-founder of Agnikul, which is an India-based startup that has been incubated at IIT Madras. It's building India's first private small satellite rocket. It's called Agniban. 100 kilogram payload to a low earth, low earth orbits up to 700 kilometers. So before I get in, the ISRO chairperson, the former chairperson, let me start with General Butt. General Butt, we had the privilege, sir, of introducing you to our viewers just a few, few weeks ago. Here we are now on the occasion where we are doing our first spaceport. Before I show the first ele ever television report of on the ground of what this spaceport and where it is being built, uh, what are your thoughts and excitement about the coming future, sir? You, as you are aware that in India, presently we only had once, we have one space, space port at Shrikota, and now a new one is being looked at. Uh, it has many advantages. All the advantages of Shrikota, and as I'm told, and it would be more for scientists to tell us later and Professor Satya to tell us that it has a major advantage that it a straight flight path would not go over Sri Lanka and that would give advantage in the fuel and make this spaceport much more attractive. It is India's second space launch site which is being built in Tutikodi that's in Tamil Nadu 2300 acres so let us now hit the ground. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a report that should resonate across the globe. For all the people think that India is just about some Hindus and Muslims constantly fighting, well, guess what? That's not what India is about. So my appeal to you is make this resonate. This is the first national television report from Kula Sekara Patinam. It's been filed by my colleague Yash, who spent several days compiling this report. This is the village. He's spoken to the locals. Listen, understand where this new spaceport is being built and how excited the locals are that it's coming up. Yash, over to you. Three, two, one, zero. Kula Sekara Patinam. A small coastal village in the southern part of Tamil Nadu will soon join an elite list of places on the global scientific map as it builds India's second space port. Kula Sekara Patinam was an ancient port in the east coast of India for the Pandavas. It is now known for its grand Dasera celebrations at the 300-year-old Muttaraman Temple. The news X team arrived at Kula Sekara Patanam site, which is mostly still barren land, but it will soon be a grand port for India's space launches. We are at Kula Sekara Patanam in Tutikor in the area of Tamil Nadu, where the ISRO is all set up to build a new ISRO space port in future. So all the steps have been taken by both state government and the central government to ensure that a new space port has been built in Tutikor area of Tamil Nadu. So now thousands of acres of land has been given to the government and the uh, Indian Space Research Organization and later on other 2000 acres land will be also very soon given by the Former ISRO Chairman K. Sivan revealed that 50% land acquisition has already been done. 2300 acres of land is to be acquired for this project. 1781 acres of land will be from the Mathavan Kuruchi village 
while 494 will be acquired from Padu Kapathu and Palakuruchi villages. Have a look at this exclusive map layout that has been prepared by ISRO. We have also accessed this particular map from ISRO where we will be showing you every inch of the detail where the spaceport will be built in Tamil Nadu. So this is the whole area marked in red color a marker and this is the area which shows that this area will be uh, located for the ISRO for building a new spaceport. So you can see that the whole area has been given to ISRO officials to build a new spaceport in Tamil Nadu in the upcoming year. So now some of the main lane land acquisitions have also been going on in which the marked yellow market areas of Madhava Kurchi, Palakata and Palli Kurchi will be the main areas for identified by ISRO officials. We reach the Kudal Nagar, Palakuruchi and Padukapathu villages to show you the present geography of these sites and also speak to some locals. We are at the Palakurchi area, so this is also one of the main areas marked for the ISRO new space port. So I'll show the pictures of this particular area and this is the complete dry land all across for long uh, acres. So now this area has been owned by several farmers and several uh, people where the government has clearly mentioned that they will be giving a huge compensation amount to uh, leave this place and they will be giving up other lands that they can give this place to ISRO to build a new space port in Tamil Nadu. We are at the Padukka to town in close areas of Kulasetri Patinam. So this is also one of the main areas which has been marked for uh, ISRO new space port. So we are getting you the pictures from the ground where if you see the land over here will very, very soon be occupied by the ISRO officials and the state government for building up a new ISRO space port in the Kula Sekira Patinam. So now what we are getting to know is that the first phase of land, uh, land acquisition has been done by the state government in the last year and now the second uh, set of land acquisition has been done by the state government. We are at the Kudal Nagar area of Kula Sri Patinam. So there are 27 families who have been staying over. I'll show you pictures of this particular village which has been here in Kula Sri Patinam and there's a clear message given out by the state government that this village will be taken up for the ISRO's uh, uh, new space port. So the Tutikuri collectors also clearly mentioned that the land acquisition will affect only 27 habitat habitations families who are staying at Kuril Nagar in Madha Kurchi village and apart from that uh, there is a clear message also that the advocated corporation has also been given an alternate land and a house uh, uh, has been given to the people who have been staying over here so they will be very soon shifted from this areas and they will be taken to the near areas that new ISRO spaceport will be built up in this particular area. Land acquisition has been a challenge but locals tell us that compensation has been granted. It is a special moment for both Tamil Nadu and the country. A village so small and not very developed today will soon witness a grand space port for India. For now, we bring you this first ever TV report. Bureau Report, News X. 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, let's kick this off. Professor Satya Chakravarti, I mean, for those who watch News X, you and I have been sitting for the better part of two years. I made this long promise that we'll do something grander. I promise you, sir, this is not the end. We will do something even grander after this. But I've managed to get uh, the principal people involved, including you. How excited are you, sir? This is coming close to where you are, very shortly. Can you unmute yourself as you speak, please? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so this is, uh, I think from, for, for space enthusiasts, it's not really whether it's closer, closer to home or not. It's actually how close to space it is. And uh, I think as uh, uh, Mr. Anil Bhatt actually mentioned, is the straight path to uh, a polar orbit. And uh, that's something that you can't get anything any better than this from a landmass. Uh, as I can see, maybe maybe in the eastern coast of Africa, perhaps, uh, you know, you could, you could get something better. But uh, from India, this is actually one of the best places that you can you can think okay, of. Okay, so can you can, can uh, you explain to us why? Because why do we need to get close to the equator? Why why Tamil Nadu makes sense? First of all, you need to be actually looking at the east coast, right? Yeah. So you need to have an eastern coast because the Earth rotates from west to east, 
So the rocket actually has a, a inherent velocity that is going eastward. So if there is any, uh, uh, if it is going to go as straight, it's going to go east eastward and it's not going to get on a landmass where there are people. That is the first part, right? So you need to actually be looking at an eastern coast. The second thing is they are actually looking at a straight um, section directly from there to the polar orbit. So if you now look at the world map, there is nothing, pretty much nothing between Kulasekarapatnam and the South Pole, right? Except Antarctica, which is not really inhabited much uh, the, to, to worry about. And we would be actually in space by the time we get there. So uh, this is a clear path to the South Pole. The third part, the third thing is in case you want to do an equatorial launch, you want to be as close to the equator as possible because, and in fact, the, 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 the orbital velocity that you will get by being on the surface close to the equator is larger and you will uh, spend less fuel if you are going to get to an equatorial launch. This is not exactly meant for that. Sri Kota was actually meant for it. Sri Kota actually originally when the SLV three days was going through equatorial launches, but when it got to the PSLV, it had to do this dogleg maneuver around Sri Lanka, which we are now avoiding to go to the okay. south. And, and what is the reason for that? That of course is of course something goes wrong, then you're not endangering a rocket crash in Sri Lanka. Is that is that roughly it, sir? Correct. So the point essentially is. Uh, in, from Sri Arikota, if you want to go to South Pole, Sri Lanka is right in the middle of the way. Yeah. Right. So you have to go around Sri Lanka, for which you are detouring and you are you are spending some propellant or fuel for doing okay. that, that that maneuver, and you are losing a little bit of payload there. Okay. So that's the excitement. Uh, Aways, come in on this because uh, uh, as part of this ecosystem that's going to actually develop this and create uh, a huge industry. Uh, where is it going? Tell us about your your uh, you know your satellite launch. What, what's this about? What is it like dealing with you know a uh, 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 SpaceX and you know is the satellite up and running? What's it doing? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think taking a step back, as you mentioned earlier, we are trying to build a constellation of hyperspectral satellites. Firstly, there exists no commercial hyperspectral data anywhere in the globe, so we would be one of the first ones in the world to do that. That's first. Um, and secondly, the constellation is to be able to provide data not only to our country, but from our country to the world um, and see how things are changing. Um, this launch that happened on April 1st is the, the first fully fledged satellite that Pixel has sort of designed, manufactured and will operate. Um, and it's important because it's not only the first for us, but it's also the first private commercial um, satellite that anyone in the country has sort of. Woo, well done. Today. Well done. Well done. Cheers, cheers to you guys. So tell us a bit about your team. How how many people are involved in all of this? Are you getting telemetry from the satellite? Yes. So I think the launch happened at around 11 p.m. India time, since it was happening from the U.S. coast, and we all stayed up till about 6 a.m. Uh, until we could get a couple of passes in. So uh, the satellite has deployed its antennas. It has deployed the solar panels, which gives it power. The batteries are running well. Um, so the satellite is in good health as of now. We have started communicating with it. Um, in the coming weeks, we'll start bringing down a lot more images from the hyperspectral camera as well. So the satellite launch is looking good. It was the entire team effort. We are about a team of you know 50 people right now um, here in. Do you, do, you, do you have the first few images? Uh, how much of them, them them is proprietary and how much how, how much can you share? <laughs> yeah, I think we uh, have only started beaming down some imagery from this satellite. So that's that's not public. But we did launch another camera last year, uh, which has started beaming down a lot more imagery as well. So we can share that across later. Okay, so, yeah, yeah. But, send, uh, send them send them to us. We'll get them put 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 on our screen because they're absolutely fascinating. So tell tell us a bit about your about your team. How how many people are you know are, are part of the team? Yeah, now I think we, we just before the pandemic, we were about eight people. And since then, you know, we are now about 50 people, strong team coming from a variety of different organizations, uh, IAST, IITs, uh, ISRO as well. A few people, you know, have bring, brought their experience that are sort of helping us. So yes. it's, a, it's a team of 50 people spread across satellite engineering and uh, satellite imagery analytics domains. Okay, now quickly, what are the service that you're hoping to offer in what kind of time frame? So, where, so people watching out there, what is the service that they can expect from you in, in what kind of time frame? Yeah, I think the industries are predominantly agriculture, environment, oil and gas and mining. So we can identify soil health, whether the fertilizer needs to be used here or not, uh, how the crop is doing and whether it needs irrigation in the particular area or not. Or an oil and gas company would be using our data to detect leaks, whether that's methane or carbon dioxide or any other poisonous gas. Okay, so what you're saying mm -hmm. to me, Aves Ahmed, is that rather than going to some foreign company to get satellite imagery of a particular area, very shortly I can come to you. It will be a satellite designed by you guys, built by you guys, hopefully put into space by, by Srinath and Professor Chakravarti very shortly. 
and from A to Z, then you guys will come and you will apply your, you know, your, your AI and you know, algorithms to analyze this and then prepare reports for companies. So this is not just about something cool happening in space. It has very, very real world applications. I keep repeating, think your Uber car finds you because of a satellite in space. Your Zomato guy finds you or Swiggy guy finds you because of a satellite in space. Uh, we know what's happening on uh, what the Chinese are up to on the border because of a satellite in space. Okay, so let me quickly get Srinath into this. Srinath Ravi Chandran, okay. Now, I mean, a buzz is happening, right? Or at least I have to try my best to create the buzz. Uh, let's start about this spaceport first, okay? Uh, because the spaceport is just is just not just a, a launch vehicle. It will come with an integrated facilities for R and D uh, potentially. And we are trying to have these conversations with the Tamil Nadu government also. I know you guys are also that a space research city gets built around it. What is the potential here? Uh, I think the more launch ports a country has, um, the more access you get to space, right? It's literally like everyone can't be building rockets and satellites without actually building uh, places to launch these from. So I think it's definitely a step in that direction. You're just opening up a gateway for people to get to space more easily. And when you're talking about numbers like say 50 launches a year, 100 launches a year, obviously you cannot be doing that just from one launch site particularly with more private players also coming in. I think it's it's going to be like the analogy for the more airlines you have, uh, the more airports you would need, right? A very similar thing is what is going to happen. And I think it's great that both the uh, space transportation policy draft that came out and what we're really seeing, uh, you know, happen in reality, they're all towards uh, futuristic, you know, things like having launch ports in India, have launching even probably away from the ocean, anywhere else. Uh, around uh, you know India, all of that is going to be possible. Okay, and now. and so and the and the you know the the sundries you know that are going to surround this spaceport. So I'm 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 guessing you guys are looking forward to having you know uh, stationary testing facilities as you guys upscale and build build bigger and bigger rockets uh, to get telemetry access to you know literally be working with ISRO on site where everybody has their own area where they're testing the rockets in a schedule. Now I, I know we're heading in that direction. But yeah. this infrastructure support as it comes, I know the other big challenge is funding. So let's talk about infra first. This infrastructure support as it comes in creating an integrated space city where literally you can, you know, all you guys can be neighbors for each other. The satellite makers, the rocket, rocket specialists, the engineers, the people who are going to do the coding for the, for the navigation systems. All of you guys can be in a space together. How will that make life easier? Uh, I mean, yeah, nothing like having another ecosystem within a driving distance from, you know, each other, right? Uh, it's just going to make uh, the entirety of the space community as one big village, I would say. Uh, and uh, what is also going to happen is space is probably going to become just like a tool. Once you have all of the people who are playing in a particular sector in a very close geography, people start thinking about new ways of using that tool. So it's, I don't, it's time, I think, where, you know, space starts going from becoming uh, just a test being, just a destination to actually like a platform from which work, different kind of things can be done. Okay. How's, uh, how's, okay. Tell us a bit about Agnikul. How's the, how's the testing, testing going? I'm, I'm assuming you're doing stationary rocket tests right now. Is that, is that, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yes. That's almost become a regular feature now. Every week there is some fine tuning of the engine that's happening with little more mixture ratio, little less mixture ratio. All of these designs to get the engine to its absolute best performance. Uh, right. So we, I think, started firing these kind of our rocket engines are hundred percent three D printed, uh, and the reason for that is it reduces the number of parts in the vehicle. For us, it actually. The entire engine is just one piece of hardware. It's like, you know, if you just buy a screw, what is just the one piece of hardware? I think that the entire rocket is one piece of hardware. Okay. Uh, and we kept testing that. We've been testing that for almost, you know, one and a half years now to fine tune it to its. Okay. And it's okay if it melts and it blows up. Okay. And you'll have to do hundreds of them uh, to get it to get it just right. And and we need to create that culture. I'm hoping that, you know, all of you guys saw what happened after Chandrayaan 2. We all now in this country are finally understanding that you have to sometimes muck it up to figure it out and that culture is, uh, is is coming our way. Okay, so let's get General Butt back into this. General Butt, I have to ask you a personal question. Sorry, I know it's a live telecast, but you know, given given your back, backdrop, uh, background, okay, I mean, literally doing a, a, a frontline anti-terror operations uh, to now the space sector, I mean, how is it that, that you are here and so passionate about it? Yeah, uh, maybe the most important reason for this is that military and armed forces are very large users of space. In fact, 
all technologies are dual use technologies be it communication be it pnt be it remote sensing which we call isr all the domains in fact space in the very beginning in the world developed when there was a competition between the two superpowers so having said that for any nation today apart from the land forces that is the army the navy the air force it has to have capabilities and abilities one in space and two in cyber and maybe i am more from the user end with all the gentlemen who have talked before especially shrinath and avesh who are our spearhead leaders who are leading our space journey and for me after serving in the army for about 40 years it's so exciting to be with these young men okay but the future leaders okay okay just they, tell us quickly sir i'm sorry to inter interrupt you general but just tell us quickly uh, i know we've had this conversation before but the indian space association which is very young it's 6 months old okay i'm assuming that you know that the membership includes uh, the private sector companies what is it and, and what are we trying to achieve here you know the indian space association was as you know made in october last year and the most important thing for us is policy advocacy get the right policy and regulations for all our members for the entire ecosystem in india that ease of doing business in space becomes as good as it is possible and we also provide a platform for collaboration between various members of ours many private players like there are two who are sitting one making rockets the other making satellites and maybe the third one who will join them will be somebody from the applications hmm. we also are looking very seriously at international cooperation because space requires cooperation on all and most importantly what professor satya has been doing <coughs> capacity development for the future hmm. we have to have the academy with us to train and prepare the youth who will take over when all our ventures now develop and they have to go forward okay we have to have develop capacity through the academy through the iits for india to be a leader in space okay professor professor chakravarti you know i have interviewed so many times sir i know you are very very practical pragmatic person okay uh, so i'm going to ask you the practical pragmatic a uh, thing that you know despite the trials and tribulations which is going to be tough you know if 6 months 1 year i know the time frames are to do a first first private sector launch things are going to go wrong if with every month that passes are you feeling more hopeful or is it you know seeming like we are stuck somewhere uh this is a very interesting journey so every minute really counts every minute is very exciting uh every minute we are going through something or the other i mean as of as i speak i was just here you know uh, talking to uh, vendors for agnicol and then i just got in at you know 359 when when i'm supposed to actually get in for the 4 o'clock so every every minute so we don't know we we we, we will we will get there and we will launch i mean 6 uh, months down the line it, it, it's not as if like the clock is ticking the the, the country is extremely supportive uh, of us like one month this way that pay should not really matter so we will have to actually do what it takes we have to be very thorough about what we are doing so every okay. minute we are actually working on it that's okay, how we so do. now now i know another two things uh, as you guys people who have been watching news x would know that for two and a half years we've been running a pretty veritable campaign so india starts building a silicon manufacturing in this country okay uh, now of course the hunt is on for lithium if you want to do an ev economy first you need to find the lithium then make the batteries then you make the electric vehicles not in the reverse order which what we've done in mobile phones so that will be a huge help i clearly know from srinath Uh, that I need to do a special telecast on 3D printing now because if he's making rocket engines out of a 3D printing machine uh, and a Boeing can make space par uh, flying parts out of a 3D printing machine, clearly that's an industry uh, to champion. Also, gentlemen, just stay with me because it is my proud privilege uh, to also introduce into this telecast. Joining us now is uh, Myra Swami Anna Durai. Uh, Mr. Professor Anur Adhurai, thank you so much for taking out your time. Let me take the opportunity of introducing you to people watching this broadcast. Uh, I know uh, for most you don't require introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here is one of the original moon men of India. He has been and is currently Vice President of the Tamil Nadu State Council for Science and Technology. Thirty-six years in ISRO, he has worked on Chandrayaan One and Mangalyaan. 
He has been uh, in 2014 recognized as one of the 100 global thinkers of the world. He's topped innovators list. And uh, if you heard of the movie uh, Mission Mangal and Akshay Kumar's character, well, a part of the inspiration of Akshay Kumar's character comes from the man on your screens. Uh, Dr. Anudarai, can you help explain to our viewers how a second spaceport is going to be really happening for our space sector. Yeah, now you look at here, even uh, the existing spaceport, Sri Garikota itself is having uh, uh, two launch pads. But however, the new spaceport, what we are talking about, is near Kulasagara Patanam, uh, is going to make uh, definitely a change uh, in which uh, our uh, uh, launch vehicles will be having more fuel efficient. Uh, because of the geographical location sitting there. With that, I think we will be able to improve upon. Beyond that, when we, are, when we made the uh, two launch phases in the Sirigarikota, a lot of lessons learned. Because it initially, it started a very, very modest way of uh, launching. And the uh, launch frequencies, we didn't expect uh, huge. But now, you, you look at here, the launch frequencies are uh, going up. And uh, the lessons learned to prepare the launch vehicle uh, also uh, it needs to be speeded up. So, Putting the things together, the lessons learned and the new demand okay. putting together when we make the uh, new spaceport, that will have the state of the heart which will enable here, here. Uh, the launches more frequently. Uh, as okay, and of course, launches. of course, of course, Dr. Anadurai, you know, we are hoping that when we are talking about launches frequently, we want to hit that one launch per week kind of target and we are fully capable of doing it. It might not be a, you know, five. Uh, a ton payload, which might be a 500 kilogram payload, but that's what matters right now. And nano satellites are the future. Uh, but you know, on the larger scheme of things, so wh where is then the space program logic coming in? Where does the spaceport then fit in, in in your mind's eye in Tamil Nadu, sir? Yeah, you you look at the in Indian space program is predominantly predominantly on the uh, remote sensing missions uh, in terms of uh, uh, launching in a polar orbit. Yes. When we are doing that, the existing at Sirigarikota, uh, when we launch the uh, PSLV, even though satellite uh, launch vehicle per se is more economical, yes. uh, it has to have do a maneuver, very tricky maneuver, uh, not to fly over any one of the uh, existing populated area. So mm. that is taking a good amount of the fuel before putting the useful launch space satellite into the orbit. Whereas from close I think we will able to, we, the maneuvers may not be called for. So okay. that uh, even the smaller launch vehicle can do okay. a better so you job. Okay, so you know, speaking of smaller launch vehicles, because we are discussing, you know, Sri Lanka and avoiding it and on the east coast uh, with Professor Chakra Chakravarti just a few, few seconds ago. Uh, when we are talking about the smaller satellites, you know, nano satellites, you know, and the satellite constellations with which uh, Avace and his team are working on. Uh, when we start, both in terms of, of ISRO's potential and the, and the now as yet untapped potential, which will take time to prove, I accept that. But when we are able, for Agnikul and, you know, Bellatrix and others, when they are able to start their launches, what are you looking at India's comparison in, in taking on the global space industry as a major satellite launch spot? Yeah, you look at here today, you, during the uh, pandemic itself, a uh, few hundreds of satellites, I think uh, nearly 3,000 small satellites have been launched uh, to make the constellation of the uh, satellites and various uh, spacecraft operators uh, to have a communication from low earth orbit. Mm. Gone are the days probably we are talking about the satellites, the geostationary satellite uh, giving uh, for the communication purpose. Now beyond the broad TV broadcast other thing, now more and more the internet of things, every handheld devices it is called for. But to, to enable that, the communication by the lower satellites, by a cluster of satellites, uh, nearly more than 3,000 satellites have been launched in the last three years itself. Right. Now, once the satellite cluster is operationalized, definitely we expect uh, something or other every alternate week. Some reason or other, uh, when you have so much of uh, 3,000, 4,000 satellites are there, uh, one satellite or two satellites uh, per week, uh, somewhere or other it is going malfunctioning is possible. But in an operational setup, we should ensure such a thing happen immediately are able to uh, replace an operational satellite. When we are doing like that, uh, today a bigger launch vehicle is used to make the cluster for at a time 50 satellites, 100 satellite launch yes, that happens yes. there. But when we are replacing, we have to one or two satellites at a time. But when we need, that means on the demand you have to launch. 
when that happens the global requirements uh, with the closer platinum the small satellite launch vehicle which can enable with the shorter duration of uh, uh, one or two weeks in advance okay. we are able to put it uh, back in a very very economical way so this combination of uh, new base port and our own small satellite launch vehicle uh, will enable uh, in a global competitiveness the people when okay. they come already so, nearly so 340 satellites will launch from 34 countries yes but now the demand is going to high okay and the now. demand i mean and i'm told that uh, there's a you when know there's happens, a definitely this will yes play, so, yeah, so yes 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 doctor you know i mean told there's a huge backlog uh, because lots of launches not taken place so there's a lot of backlog of these satellites and you're saying there's a potential that you know within a few weeks notice you can have a made to order launch uh, and and that will be another game changer uh, okay so when we build the space port sir and I, I know that you know it's, it's still at land acquisition stage, about half of that has been completed, but that's the major thing, right? And I can tell you from the people we've spoken to the ground, my reporter has been there for several days, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a happy position. People are excited on the ground, they're getting their compensation, it's, it's at good value, so, so it's progressing well. But once we get the spaceport going, sir, in terms of creating an integrated R&D facility, in, in providing uh, R&D facilities, uh, uh, rocket testing facilities for the private sector. How does that enhance our infrastructural capacity, sir? Yeah, that's a good question. Now, you look at here the space uh, small satellite launch vehicle and uh, we are talking about the Kulasegar uh, Patanam launch pad put together when we are making. As I told, all the lessons learned from the previous uh, launch phase in Syria got what we made can yes. be put in the air. Now, you look at here. Yes, lessons learned for the uh, launch uh, uh, station is concerned. But beyond that, many uh, systems, launch vehicle systems, have to be brought back from elsewhere and uh, the, that also to Sri Lanka assembled there. And beyond that, even satellite also made uh, from elsewhere, from Bangalore it comes, from Ahmedabad, the payloads are coming there. So these are a lot, a lot of logistic issues are there. But let us assume when you are making uh, near the Plesagar Patinam, a new launch phase. Yes. Then along with that, there is a very good possibility the end-to-end -end stages which is required to for the uh, SS SSV can be made afresh. Then along with that, even as it was there, NAM is small satellites. Uh, definitely a space park can come there, uh, wherein the satellites also could be made nearer to that area. Here, here. So all put together, uh, there is a possibility of what's really happening elsewhere. For example, SpaceX is concerned. Almost things are happening within one, one place. Similar thing if you do, definitely economically it will be more and more viable. So that we have to do new. When we are doing new, already ISRO um, in, and uh, Government of India yes. is embarking, uh, giving the technology transfers to the uh, private companies and so that they can do end-to-end -end satellite making and uh, launch vehicle assembling launching operating so this this phenomenon comes beyond that we expect good number of new space faring nations uh, isro has lost uh, three to four years every year around 15 uh, countries which today today don't have the uh, uh, launching capabilities yes they have been uh, brought and given training of what space program can do okay. how to make the small satellites the uh, hands-on experience given some, something similar what India got it nearly 60 years back. So there is a far good possibility those people also will come here. So private players will have a meaningful thing for Indian requirement as well as possibly a, uh, uh, outside India also requirements coming there. Okay. So the new passport and uh, along with the private players playing a meaningful role with the existing uh, policy of uh, space open to the private, yes. I think all put together, I, I, I expect a good ecosystem will emerge okay. uh, that will enable private players playing a meaningful role uh, in the upcoming years from Indian okay. side. Okay, Dr. Basai, Mayaswami, I know, I know, I know, I have to let you go, but I have to ask you this, sir, because you know uh, this is what the global excitement buzz seems to be. A uh, satellite internet. Now, I know there are two Indian companies very seriously looking at it. One uh, uh, JV has already been formed by a major telecom operator. I mean, I can say it's Bharti Airtel working with British Telecom. Uh, you know. Uh, uh, is is it something we should be looking at? Is it something we should be hopeful for? Are we in that race on, on satellite internet, sir? I think that will happen, yes, as I told uh, already. So we will, uh, you look at here, even with the PSLV itself, yes. with the Sri Garikota launch itself, 
uh, we uh, launched in a year more than 340 uh, satellites from 34 countries we are launched because we are economically competitive to somebody but now when we go to Kulasagar Patnam with the small satellite launch vehicle uh, our own SSV from Kulasagar Patnam will be much cheaper than what PSLV itself so put together definitely we will be much more competitively uh, edge when as I told here a new requirement of replacing the operational satellites of small satellites in the cluster is going to come. So when that comes, uh, putting the things uh, together, uh, uh, I feel a good amount of uh, uh, the satellites coming from outside because of commercial viability. One yes. Thing. Strategically also, I think um, there are competing uh, players uh, from the uh, uh, to make the communication cluster operational. Yes. So that point of view also, there is a good possibility. Uh, I think uh, we will get uh, uh, a very good global. Uh, okay. Uh, well. Uh, scenario in the global scenario, we also will be a meaningful players uh, okay. using the SSV and Place Agri Patnam and the private well, partners. Well, uh, well, here, here, Good here, here. If you're watching this, if you're watching this, if you if you're wanting to take up, you know, engineering and 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 coding right now, well, think about it. How exciting it's about to become. And we are not talking about 30 years later, 40 years later. We're talking about the next two or three years. Uh, uh, Professor Aradurai, thank you so much for taking out the time for joining us on this telecast, sir. Uh, my privilege to have spoken to you. Let me quickly jump back in with General Bhatt. General Bhatt, you know, now there are two big things. Uh, uh, with uh, which uh, Professor Anandarai mentioned. Number one, that we are learning from previous experience which we've had with you know the, the two launch pads in, in Srihari Kota. For the first time, we are going to build this space court, spaceport at a time when we have a space policy. This will be the first infrastructure or massive infrastructure upgrade when you got you know you guys ISPA uh, in space operational. So the integrated private nature will be there for the first time. What do we need to get right? That Kula Sekar Patnam, you know, becomes as synonymous as Sri Hari Kota or Houston. So, firstly, like you said, the Indian Space Policy 2022 is round the corner. And all of us in the industry are looking at it being promulgated as early as possible. Yeah. Because what is most important for commercially for us to be viable is light touch policies ease of doing business where sanctions come faster. We are, we are looking forward to this policy because we understand we would have a single window in in space. And that would help a lot for all these launches, even for our startups to be able to carry out space activities in India. Now, as far as the ecosystem goes, there are two views on it. One is build on the existing infrastructure. And logistically, they, as you said, are in Bangalore or they are in Kumba or the Sri Kota, or now they would be at Tutikaran. This, this area provides facilities for launching and even for testing and all which hmm. are in close proximity. Hmm. But the other view is we have to spread space to the entire country. Yes. We have to look at similar hmm. parks, space, economic, space zones coming up in other parts of the country. Ultimately, it has to be wheel and spokes. There are a number of places from where infrastructure, things are being built, and then they are being centrally brought to a location. Hmm. Uh, that would help for the growth of the entire nation and capabilities all over to be able to come together. But oh. yes, uh, this Tutikaran does provide a great opportunity for creation of an ecosystem around it. Okay, so I mean, if you're looking at state of the art, which is the conversation, and we're going to do it because we are fully capable of doing it, then uh, uh, Professor Chakravarti, now, now when we're talking about lessons we have learned, right? So ISRO has a set of lessons. Uh, one of the premier and one of the very few rocket testing facilities and R&D facilities are where you, where you are working, Alma Matter to you, uh, IIT, IIT Madras. So taking what you already have, the existing infrastructure. If you wanted to upscale it when the opportunity is coming just a few hours down the road, okay, what would be an ideal vision that you know you would see? Hey, I think I'm going to uh, launch into some kind of a futuristic view about these things. Please, please. Which, which might look unrealistic at the moment, maybe science, science fiction. But there is, there is a method to the madness as the cliche goes. I think we should actually move away from requiring infrastructure uh, that has to be spawned by the governments and all of that stuff. Technology should be such that, uh, like like what I think Srinath said, we are essentially uh, making developing a cab to go to space, which means that cabs can actually drive on roads 
that's the kind of thing right so mm. let me just explain what i mean first of all our launches should not require too much infrastructure at all if you look at the kind of small satellites that we are talking about that require small launchers that we are looking at we should be able to actually launch them out of trucks and we all we need all we should need is only a barren piece of land so we don't really need these big infrastructure all of that stuff's all western concepts of the 20th century right interesting if you are now trying to chop this down into lots of constellations of smaller satellites we should be able to do it from anywhere you should not really require too much uh, space at all in the first place second we will go in the direction of aerial launches which means that we will take off from wherever we want and we will go to some particular altitude and then release a rocket and then go from there so where is the question of like a spaceport anymore right so all you need is like maybe an airport so from every airport you should be able to actually take off with a rocket in the belly and 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 go and uh, launch the third thing is essentially a uh, sea seaports i can take a barge and launch right so i can actually take take a rocket to the equator and launch from there so all of these are actually the direction which we will be going and we will launch us a lot more nimble when compared to what we are stuck with with like a huge mindset problem so we have to unshackle ourselves with, from all these things and say hey how can we actually get to space from wherever we are okay so make it make it ubiquitous a couple of acres and, yeah. and not 2000 acres of 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 requirement uh, and it's it's a fascinating it sounds futuristic but then the future is here future is now uh, let me get away back into this conversation away you know but you know coming back to my original question what would help now uh, if we are looking in your specific area where one thing we have got sorted is the ability to do the analytics and the coding and and the soft side of it okay but on the hard side of it in in you know creating the circuitry in in getting the silicon printed uh, and and put, putting it together if we had a fab, a fabrication down the road that you could just make a design and they could uh, print it for you you know at the you know whatever 10 8 9 nanometer level uh, how will these things then make your life easier i think there are a few things where we still depend on foreign countries to to get things in um, no matter who is it that is doing solar panels for example in yeah. space the cells still come from abroad right um, and to be able to actually make those cells you require foundries and then from there it's not a a bigger step to actually have semiconductor foundries where you can actually create the sensors that you want that go into our cameras and what not um, so i think what that will help with is it helps reduce the level of dependency that we would have on any other country the level of dependency that we would have on any supply chain issues um, and space is a very strategic domain unlike a lot of other industries right where uh, having things that you can create um, in your country to use in your country is something that will be very very relevant especially in a domain like space so i think that's that's where it will be very really important even in our case even though the satellite is indigenously designed and here here is where it is integrated and tested and operated from uh, some of the components that need to go in there we are forced to be able to get them from abroad so i think helping gradually set up that infrastructure either um, through the government through private entities or through public private partnerships will be very critical in bringing okay. it out okay okay so okay so let me can okay, i have i've spoken with the taiwanese personally i've spoken with uh, pretty much the principal players in government minister level and the private sector so the the semiconductor part is happening okay it's very realistic is going it's it's happening so we are on the right track there solar panel also we are on the right track for indigenous of course you need a particular grade of solar panels uh, uh, so i will have to check on with you on that uh, what about uh, let me get shinad shinad the other issue has been with the defense guys tell me when they're doing uh, these uh, 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 six generation aircraft design uh, materials uh, where are you stuck on materials that you're hopeful we can do indigenously later um very interesting question so i think most of the materials that we need at least from a launch vehicle standpoint are available in india but that said for certain things you do have to go outside certain aluminum alloys for example so, so okay so the, the particular yeah. particular alloys okay yeah you will have to go outside and that's the only set of alloys that will give you the strength that's needed to build aerospace structures right so uh probably some of this could be replaced with 3d printing powder and you know for the adopting a manufacturing technique that involves 3d printing but for extremely large scale structures you still have to go outside so that is a potential area for improvement. okay and the, and the and the and the coatings and the carbon fiber and all the stuff that you have to put you know the the, the special heat heat coating the ceramics that you require uh, i don't know exactly of course how you building your rocket but how much of this uh, are you are you being able to locally source or having supplies and how many how much of this are you having to look abroad i would say 90 to 95% is available within the country Excellent. for certain electronic components and certain raw materials you will have to go outside 
There is okay. no other way. And, and when it comes to the coding of, you know, of the systems checks and the navigation, are you being able to do that in-house or at least within the country? Yeah, that we're doing it in-house. Okay, that so, so that part. So it's, it's about certain alloys. If one of my producers is listening into this telecast, uh, let's reach out to the principal steel makers. Uh, I think we have access to pretty much all of them uh, and find out what are the specific alloys and what can be done. I, I know this is a requirement for the uh, for the uh, for HAL as well that some of these alloys we are not making because the economics don't make sense but we have a defense sector to work on al al also. Okay, so let me, uh, I know I have to let General Bhatt go so let me quickly come back to you. Gen General Bhatt, uh, for people watching this broadcast and which is why it's happening, now you guys are doing this on a day to day basis. I am trying to stop the countries and you know po put his attention for students who are you know currently you know in you know in coming out of covid from 10th 11th graduating for kids going into college for people taking sciences for entrepreneurs out there seeking opportunity what is the potential scale of this sector 5 years from now that we should all be looking hey this is what i want to be doing i want to be a rocket man so where the policy is now going to come and one of the ma major reasons for opening space to the private industry has been that though we are amongst the leading spacefaring nations of the world, our eco economic share of the global pie is just 2.69%. So at a very conventional growth rates also, we in the next five years, we expect it to go three to five times more. In fact, our hope is it would be much more. And if this has to happen, it will require a lot of more skilled manpower, skilled in all aspects of engineering, space science, and all other support structures which will be required for space. And there's opportunity everywhere because what is most important is the application part of it, which we have not talked of. Yes. Today, space is touching everything of our life. When we move from place A to B, B by Google, if we have to take out money from an ATM, if you have to know what is the weather, if we have to construct a new road, we have to look at agriculture, like Away said, or for disaster management, everywhere in our life, space is now becoming more and more important. Mm. And this will become much more important in communication as the LEO satellites come up. Yeah. Because broadband, and especially in far flung areas, this would be done by the LEO satellite constellations. Mm. And as this is happening, in all of this, there's the expansion of the economy, the space economy in specific, and there are great opportunities. From two specialized areas, that is the launching of rockets, to satellites, there are much, much more opportunities in the downstream that is in the application. Okay. All right. Well, we can't really do Tamil Nadu's first spaceport, India's second spaceport, without having a tribute to APJ Abdul Kalam. You've just seen photographs of him uh, standing there as Sri Hari Kota was being built and launched. Uh, and uh, my colleague Yash, after he went uh, to Kalasekar Patnam, uh, went to Rameswaran. Uh, let's listen in. Well, we are joined by a family member of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So, hello, sir. It's a great pleasure talking to you. So, how do you see this uh, Dr. Kalam's journey now? No, this is a wonderful journey, Dr. Kalam, where he started from the childhood, so climbed up to the president of India. So, so inspiration, so motivation. So, there are so many people visiting here to get some motivational kind of things. So, now, ISRO is all set to build a new spaceport at uh, Turi Korin and it's very close, nearly 200 only kilometers. So, how do you feel? Will, will it make Dr. Kalam proud now? Yeah, definitely, because so it's very near to Rameshwaram, hardly three hours from to Rameshwaram to Tutukudi. So there are so many government school students and private school students who want to pursue the space studies uh, or cosmology. So it's very great, um, uh, wonderful opportunity for them to reach that uh, Tutukudi state port. Can you also share your experience with Dr. Kalam? Because everyone knows him as a very great man, but no one knows him more of his personal life. So can you also share your experience with him? Yeah, first of all, uh, Dr. Kalam always uh, wants to do some positive things. So whoever met, whoever meets, and wherever he go, he wants to do some positive kind of thing. So it's very positive man. So if you met someone, so how he will get some positive things from that man? So always he will reduce the negativity. So, he's very inspiration and also very good teacher for me. 
So how does it feel Tamil Nadu is growing in its throat? Will it make a legacy of Dr. Kalam? Yeah, definitely. Because so now we are uh, the fifth, I think, fifth nation to put uh, uh, orbit in this, all the satellites. And we also reached Chandrayaan uh, 1 and 2 missions. Now we are going for the third mission. Still we are reaching out through Ganga and through Mars. So we are, ad- we are going for the advanced for the space. Uh, space nation. So we are, we are very proud of ISRO and uh, that all the, the national leaders who are involved in the space programs. So how do the f- like future kids have been pursuing same thing of things Dr. Kalam did or how was it? No, because Dr. Kalam's dream uh, mostly he wants to live the most developed country in India. So uh, space based to solar he wants to bring back all the because of to reduce the energy uh, shortage. And also there are so many opportunities for the space and the satellites and the and outer space of our country. So the students can get the good opportunity from our India. So have Dr. Kalam shared the vision for Tamil Nadu and India for ISRO or any space thing? No, actually Dr. Kalam shared the vision for Indian Space Research Organization up to the 2050. So uh, I don't think so the Tamil Nadu, I don't know anything about it. But 2050 he given the uh, season for uh, space and the satellite to oriented Vision 2050. Yes, already spoken few years back on building a new spaceport in Kulasari Patinam. So how do you feel when it gets succeeded now? No, the thing is, not, uh, we worked with ISRO and the DRDO. So there are different uh, part of our states, there's a different kind of uh, people and a different kind of uh, working environment and different kind of students you will get. So in this Kulasari Patinam, we, in Tamil Nadu, so we are very proud to get the own space station in red. So we will uh, get it done, what uh, the p- people and uh, the scientists are going to do. So how does it feel for the family when Tamil Nadu and India has been going in ISRO and uh, Dr. Kalam has also played a major role, so how does the family feel that? Yeah, very proud because 1977, which we launched the first SLV-3 rocket, he got failed. So again he worked for uh, three years uh, without any uh, kind of uh, failure mode, so he got succeeded in 1980. So now, looks we are launching so many satellites in, and, and we are launching for European satellites through our own uh, rockets. So it's very proud of uh, being Dr. Kalam has involved so many uh, launchings like uh, satellites and uh, missiles and the Pokhran test. So very proud of and still we want more Kalam to come out and do the service to the nation. So how does it feel for family when ISRO has been doing a very big thing now and building a colossal port and space port? So how does the family feel and how may, uh, does it make proud Dr. Kalam? Yeah, Dr. actually Dr. Kalam wants to uh, do some research kind of activity in Tamil Nadu also. So we are very happy for getting this uh, Goshaira Patnam port for Indian Space Research Organization. And also I especially thank our uh, new chairman for uh, uh, starting very immediately. And all the people and given the uh, space for the Tamil Nadu government and uh, getting operated. Well, we had the... Uh, for family member of Dr. APG Abdul, I'm talking exclusively on news X regarding this news, ISRO Closer Space Port. All right, that was uh, uh, Yash. He's in Rameswaram, in fact, as we speak. And now it is my proud privilege uh, to introduce live into this telecast uh, Dr. Kaila Savadibu Sivan, uh, former chairperson of ISRO, graduate of BSc from Madura University, where he went then to the Madras Institute of Technology, then to ISC in Bengaluru, then finally IIT in Bombay. He has been director of the Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. He's uh, run the Liquid Propulsion System Center. He has been secretary of the Department of Space. But you all know him as we began this telecast. When as a country, we stood with ISRO uh, over... Uh, uh, over Chandrayaan and, and, the, and, the, and the final phase where something went wrong and the pride we all felt as a community coming together uh, and the tears we wept uh, as a, again a country together. Uh, uh, Dr. Sivan, I have with me, sir, on the telecast also uh, uh, Professor Satya Chakravarti from IIT Madras is with us, sir. He's from Agnikul, as you know. Aves Ahmed of Pixel is with us as well. General Bhatt of ISP, ISPA has also been with us. Uh, Srinath from Agnikul is also with us. So, we are all excited. Uh, you are of, you're obviously from Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu, sir. I have to ask you uh, the straightforward question. How important is this going to be, not only for Tamil Nadu, but for India, the new space port, sir? Uh, sir, first of all, let me thank you for giving me that opportunity. Uh, 
this uh, particular uh, spaceport having uh, a requirement let me talk about what is the need for this spaceport uh, in fact all this uh, new technology really making this uh, a small satellite to be made available to make this small satellite to be launched actually that is uh, we need small uh, satellite launch vehicle yes and uh, right now this uh, the satellites are being launched by a big launch vehicle which is not cost effective so that people are looking for a small satellite launch to be available now there there, there are a lot of uh, opportunities for the private industries to make a small satellite launch vehicle and uh, isro is also making uh, one such uh, vehicle after some time this vehicle will be transferred to the industry to make now this uh, uh, to launch this small satellite launch launch vehicle we need a spaceport at at now we have only the sriri coat available to us but uh, this small satellite launch vehicle mainly uh, launching that uh, 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 satellites in that uh, ssp orbit that is uh, almost uh, we have to launch towards south from uh, sriyarikota it is not possible to launch towards south so we uh, analyzed what are the possible location we identified that kulasegara patnam is the one place where we can have a uh, good launch location to launch towards south and uh, having understood this the, this uh, potential then we approached the government of india to get approval and uh, based on the approval we approach tamil nadu government to give the land and now the tamil nadu government is uh, very happy to know that they are uh, taken uh, project very very uh, taken uh, in the highest level and uh, they give started giving the land to us now this uh, once this is available this particular uh, the uh, satellite launches will be built on that and what is the importance of this uh, launch site definitely the the private launch vehicles and private parties will be definitely make use of this launch site for launching so it is going to create economy for the country yes also this uh, the entire area that industrial development will happen also that is a lot of employment will happen and uh, uh, not only indian uh, industries probably by look seeing the correct location even uh, people from abroad may come and uh, launch this uh, their vehicles from this launch site yes and uh, also it is the entire area is going to be developed and uh, we are uh, going to get uh, that uh, uh, that uh, the the scientific temper of the community is going to be enhanced because of this uh, launch pad okay well all of this is is a, is excellent and so hopeful dr sivan uh you know but i have to ask you sir you know you you've been recently cha- chairperson of isro at a very crucial time we saw in the creation of in space we saw the drafting of the of the space policy how would you define dr sivan the future of the space sector in india sir so uh, basically this uh, if you are seeing that that initially we started our the space program in india with the intention or with the vision of uh, application of the space based technology for the benefits of the common man of the country now now we have established this applications now once this uh, vision is satisfied what next there is a large demand for the satellites applications and also we understand that there is a large economy is involved and what is the type of space economy globally and we have seen that the nearly 450 billion dollar space economy out of which india is having contribution only about 
and uh, if you are saying that out of this uh, the 450 billion dollar around uh, only 2% for launch vehicle about 5% uh, for uh, the satellite about 48% for ground infrastructure and 45% for uh, satellite applications this is a lot of downstream uh, requirement hmm. now having understood that lot of potential what is the future what we are seeing is in future this this economy is going to increase to 1 trillion dollar so our honorable prime minister wanted to get this economy to india not two percent we need at least 10 to 15 percent of space economies to come to india here, here. so what is the way israel alone cannot do so we have opened up the space sector for the private people by this process lot of private people start do it the economy will come so by based on the space sector reform it is basically promoting the private people to do the job mm -hmm. and it is uh, authorizing the people to do the job it is hand holding the people to do the job so for that only the space policy as well as the in space everything is created yes now how the future is going to be looking like all the commercial missions will be taken over by the private industries. ISRO will concentrate mostly on the research and development. This technology will be transferred to industry so that the entire ecosystem of the country will grow. And we, India, will uh, take a major role to acquire the global space economy. That is our aim. Hmm. Well, so exciting, sir. Are you, are you as enthusiastic, you know, when you see the number of space startups i know in space already has i think 24 or 28 registered uh, 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 space uh, companies but in karnataka and tamil nadu i interview so many of these space startups i have two of the founders or th in fact three of the founders sitting with me right now of pixel and agni cool sir how exciting is this now first of all let me uh, congratulate uh, pixel uh, ceo mr uh, uh, ahmed is with for, us yes. uh, launching their uh, first satellite very recently and also that uh, pixel is doing a fantastic job of uh, the fabricating realizing very advanced satellite hyperspectral imaging satellite very small satellite it's a very i mean let me compliment the team Similarly, Agricola is also doing a fantastic job of launch vehicle, of creating innovation, disruptions in that uh, the technology development for the engine. So, they also will be doing that one. And not only this, these two uh, friends, there is a lot of other people also doing very good job in Bellatrix, Dijendra, like many, many startups really doing fantastic work. They are, they are disruptive. And I'm expecting that they are do, going to do the job very well in future, not only in Indian wise, globally they are going to capture the market. Let me congratulate and advance uh, greetings to them. Okay, and it's, it's all under your blessings that you know you, you've helped us and of course uh, Somnaji and his team are helping us with now, sir. Uh, are you hopeful, uh, uh, Dr. Sivan, of, the, of a private company doing a space launch, uh, you, know, you know, shortly in the near future of a rocket launch, sir? Definitely. I definitely that uh, feel that they can do the job. And uh, I have seen that uh, like a, a, a startup like a Skyroot or uh, Agnigul that uh, they have uh, that, uh, done the engine test successfully. Also that is they have done that uh, in, a, in an effective way. And uh, by this end of this year they are going to have the suborbital missions. And uh, I am sure, I don't have any doubt that within a year or two, they will be able to launch to the orbit. Here, here. And already satellites are in that orbit and I am sure that these uh, rockets also they are going to launch. Okay. I don't have any doubt okay. on that. You are filling us with a lot of hope and enthusiasm. Uh, Dr. Sivan, you know, from, from the private sector, in, you know, in generating the funding required for R&D, how do we now appeal to an ecosystem uh, to you know to help help with that uh, 
See, this uh, right now there are a lot of uh, angel investors and uh, venture capitalists to help these people. And I have seen in the news that uh, our uh, Pixel or Agnigul or Skyroot, they are able to make it. And in addition to that one, there is a lot of uh, good ecosystem available in the country, in the government, mainly to encourage the startups that I have seen. That is the one. And also that is that uh, government mechanism like Niti Ayok, they really that, uh, that they created a mechanism for providing fund for research and development by the uh, private people. And uh, there are a lot of government mechanisms available. One must understand and get the use of that. Hmm. And now that uh, uh, we have that uh, our Indian Space Association. Yes. And uh, they definitely they will help to do the research and uh, provide fund for them. Okay. Uh, in terms of an approach to R&D in creating an ecosystem, sir, do I mean... Do we need a you know a, a space research zone or a space city coming around these spaceports? No, this is a wonderful idea. In fact, uh, this is the idea mooted during that uh, interaction of the Honorable PM with uh, industry people. That is both uh, Ravi Chandran and uh, Ahmed will be aware of this one. Actually, to get this ecosystem, first of all, we need a National Space Proportion Institute. This institute gives a, a, a training or a, a, the, the initial analysis and give input for the people from academic students or industries or uh, startups. This the institute we are in the process of making, we started sometime earlier. And along with that, we must have that uh, incubation centers to, to, to carry out the research. And this research can be converted into product by industries nearby. Mm. And this product should be used by the space uh, industries. So the entire system should be available at one place, one city. That is the National Promotion Center, then incubation centers, and the associate industries, and academia to do the research. Okay. Together, if they are coming together, actually we plan to have this one uh, somewhere uh, that at the earliest. Now I am sure that it will be happening very soon, this okay. one. Well, we are excited and looking forward. Okay, so you know, before I let you go, Doc Dr. Sivan, uh, how far have we come? You know, we are on the 75th year of India's independence. Our uh, Mahotsav for that is coming up in just a couple of months. You know, the legacy of Vikram Sarabhai, of APJ Abdul Kalam, uh, would, they be, would they be proud of what we are doing, sir? So definitely, we must first of all thank our forefathers like uh, Dr. Sarabhai and uh, Dr. Kalam. Uh, they had a vision of uh, application of the space-based technology for the benefits of the common enemy of the country, especially people from rural area, unreachable, underserved areas. And uh, to get this technology, they, they created an ecosystem to develop the launch vehicle, develop the satellite, develop the, uh, the, uh, the ground infrastructure indigenously. Now we have a, a fantastic three launch vehicle we have and uh, we have that uh, fantastic satellites we have and uh, the satellites covering the earth observations and communications, uh, space science and as well as the navigation. Yes. And if you are seeing that uh, in the earth observations we have the synthetic Apache data satellites and uh, communications, we have that uh, broadband communication satellite, navigation world class satellite, and we have around 50 numbers of satellite in space. And uh, now, each and every moment of Indian citizen is one way or linked with the space activity. Mm. Whatever the vision, the Dr. Sarabhai and uh, uh, Dr. Kalam had, is able to meet. Now, having meet, uh, met their uh, uh, vision, now our Honorable Prime Minister has given a vision to go forward to make space as a revenue generating economy. Here, here. That way we are working. That's what new uh, that, uh, space sector reform has created. Here, here. I mean, that, that, is, that is amazing. Uh, before I let you go, sir, I mean, what, I mean, there were many, but what was your, what do you remember looking back at ISRO 
uh, your work continues but what was your proud moment there sir as as cha as chairman of isro your most proud moment so uh, so basically i started my career from psle project and superintendent as a chairman isro in this last 38 years and 3 months the many many proud moments there is how i resolved the many technical issues of psl we project and the sitara development dol wb uh, general development and the successful launch of psl mission configuring the gsl vehicle and the how that uh, analyze that uh, gsl v episode to failure and how we made a correction how the correction saved the next mission around four a seven hundred crore we saved by small correction that i really proud of that then uh, the important missions advanced mission like uh, rlv and uh, 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 scramjet and 104 satellite mission that is another one set of uh, proud moment now after become chairman isro the, the the way with the help of our honorable pm we have initiated the gaganyan program then the children program like uvika and the unnadi and the chandrayaan 2 program a uh, mission and uh, then the, at last we had that uh, our uh, space sector reform mm. we have a different vision that uh, honorable prime minister given i was very happy to get involved in that vision and like that many many uh, the proud moments i have in the last 38 years of my uh, experience okay i have to ask you sir you know the moment when you know we got the you know disappointing news about the about the chandrayaan 2 lander uh, it was an emotional moment for the entire country i mean we were all uh, you know you know you know pulling back tears with with you sir how was that moment sir how emotional was it so basically this the chandrayaan 2 had a two uh, wish, uh, the uh, mission objectives one was the orbiter another is lander orbiter was successful it is still doing the job next seven years it is going to do the job but unfortunately during landing uh, we were not able to achieve the mission the mission ended up that failure and when when i was successful the entire country was praising me and when i was failure again the entire country really it is still again praised me to achieve whatever we could get on that day we had luckily that uh, our honorable prime minister with us and he motivated the entire the scientists and he hugged me and uh, consoled me and really that uh, the, the type of the way he consoled me that it gave a lot of message without telling any words and then not only that one that after the mission whenever i was going out the the public either this whether is north south east west north east wherever i was going i could see that the the entire country the people they were uh, that approached me and they they praised me and they really they they stood along with me to give a courage to take the further action and i could see not only here when i went to, when i was going to abroad there all the indians they, they they were really supporting me i could see only one thing that is unity in diversity and not only unity in diversity unity when when we are in trouble mm-hmm. that way that the entire nation was supporting and i felt that very really proud and i feel that i should do something more to the country in water capacity it is possible with for me dr Thank. sivan you are a, a living legend you are an inspiration the work that you and the large teams you have led have done in building the framework legacy which will be taken forward by uh, you know young shrinath and professor chakravarti and you know uh, aves and pixel and you mentioned sky route bilatrix agnikul Uh, thank you so much for all that you've done for this country sir we are as emotional and as proud of you and all the achievements and of your entire team and and here's wishing you the best for all your future contributions to india's scientific temper thank you very much for joining us on this telecast dr sivan 
All right. Let me uh, take thank the you. opportunity. Thank you, thank thank you, you Dr. Thank Sivar. Let me take the opportunity of quickly hopping back uh, just on that moment, Professor Chakravarti, of the importance of a country just turning the corner and in understanding that in great works, you are going to have failures. You know, and here we are, you know, sort of that every time you lose a match and they want that the captain should be replaced. Uh, how, imp how significant really was that moment? You know, you guys saw it live like the rest of us did. Oh, yeah. In fact, actually, I was in a, a TV channel giving live commentary of that particular event. Yeah. And for, for one thing, we had no idea what was going on. <laughs> right. So I was there all night. So I think the larger pick question here is to develop a lot of scientific temper. So scientific temper is all about going through failures and successes and learning from the failures. In fact, uh, that's what that's what I think I, I, I used to say somewhere. Um, failures are uh, stepping stones, successes are milestones. We just move on from successes and uh, learn from failures, right? So that's the kind of scientific temper that we need to uh, cultivate among our people. And that's what we should be striving for. And that's a messaging that we have to give. Uh, so that, that is not to say that we actually will deliberately fail. But that said, I think ISRO has been a shining example, not just right now with the Chandrayaan, but uh, they have gone through, uh, for example, the ASLV failures of the 80s, where they were well-crafted failures to learn about a lot bigger uh, launch vehicle, which is the PSLV. So they they actually packaged a bunch of new technologies that they want to try out on a smaller scale, like strap-ons, bulbous heat shield, and so on, hmm. such that they will actually uh, win the PSLV. And look look at what has happened with the PSLV. Amazing success, right? So 50-plus uh, successive cons consecutive launch successes nowhere else in the world. And that's because of the failures of the ASLV. So we, we have to understand how these things have happened in the past and uh, make sure that every step, new step that we take, we actually are in, in an experimental mood. We have a temper to face failures. Yeah, if, uh, yeah if, and, if, and that's uh, a lesson for every every young person watching out there. If you don't try and, and, and muck it up, you learn nothing, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was, I had just begun my career. I remember I was live on television when our first cryogenic engine failed. And, yeah. and that was a spectacular failure. It really blew up in the blew up in the sky, and there was stunned silence for all of us. And what a long way we've come! I can't begin to explain to you. I don't know, frankly, beyond certain certain details, but how difficult to get cryogenic technology is, and the problems we face. You know, I've interviewed uh, Nambi Narayanan and had that yeah. conversation. He's a man who, of course, led the cryogenic program, and how many problems and stumbling blocks we faced. Okay, but uh, be, uh, be, uh, don't go anywhere because. Uh, uh, Dr. Somnath, the current ISRO chairman is, is coming up very, very shortly. I also have the Tamil Nadu BJP president. I promise you, my parliamentary team is uh, speaking to one MP after the other on the spaceport today. They've got people from the BJD, the BJP, the Congress across states. Are they being forced to discuss the spaceport today? Because I've said we're going to stop the press and talk about it uh, because we need to. Uh, there's a very interesting Tamil Nadu startup, Chennai startup called Space Kids. Uh, their CEO will be joining us also very shortly. But before that, let me get Avais back into this. Avais, so you got the glowing praise uh, from, uh, from the former chairman of ISRO about, about the cool technologies you're coming up. So I have to ask you, uh, I know you can't give away all your secrets that are proprietary, but what is the cool stuff that you're doing? What are the new things you've come up with? Spectral camera that we host on our satellite. So, you know, many organizations around the world can make satellites, but the magic with Pixel lies in making hyperspectral cameras. Now, what exactly is hyperspectral? Just taking a step back, there are three kinds of imaging you talk about. We'll talk about, you know, uh, Earth observation. Uh, you have RGB imaging, you have multispectral, and you have hyperspectral. Everything that we see with our eyes is information in only three wavelengths. It's red, green, and blue. RGB, you might have heard of. Yes. So that's information in three channels. The satellites that are currently up there today beam down data in about eight to 10 of these wavelengths. So there are RGB, but also a few infrared wavelengths. So that becomes multispectral. You're moving from just three to about 10 information channels. But hyperspectral captures information in hundreds of these information channels across the entire spectrum, visible and infrared. So you don't miss anything in the spectrum that we can see or we cannot see. Now that leads to things on ground like what you can do with multispectral satellite is you can say that here is a farm and here is a crop that's doing good, bad, average. But what you actually need is to be able to look at soil health parameters. You need to look at crop species and identify what are you looking at, whether it's rice, what kind of rice, whether it's genetically modified or not, whether there's moisture lacking, irrigation levels are all right. 
and that's the level of detail these additional hundreds of bands provide so i think that's what uh, we are trying to do when we started we realized that this is the data set that was needed but it was not available anywhere and okay. we said we will okay. and deploy that all, all right so when you look talking constellation we're talking about how many i mean are we talking about dozens hundreds or are we talking about thousands what kind of satellites are we, are, are we talking about yeah we will we are going to launch uh, you know two satellites this year one is already up the other one is scheduled to go up on an isro pslv rocket uh, in the next few months Woo. and then we are <laughs> and then we are looking at six more satellites that will launch early next year right now that are currently um, being manufactured and tested as we speak uh, and then further we will be looking at at least 12 more by the end of next year so there's uh, a you know a significant number of okay. satellites that are already in planning but we are looking at a total of 36 satellites um, 30 okay 36 uh, completes your you know whatever i'm using phase one of your constellation system okay and of course as you get more business uh, then you can increase that uh, so let me get shinat back into it uh, uh, you know shinat uh, so i asked uh, 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 dr sivan about this and we've asked uh, dr somnath about this also we'll be listening to him very very shortly uh, but you know you guys are you know are the headline grabbers we've spoken to you several times so you you got your base level of funding going okay uh, but in terms of coming up with a conceptualization uh, like we're doing with uh, uh, the silicon sector where 75000 crores of pli has been already put out by government uh, in terms of creating uh, a different kind of, of award systems or a, you know an X prize kind of concept, I've discussed this with Oves recently. Does India need an X prize? Uh, do we need insurance uh, in case something goes wrong? How are you guys? What is the ancillary sort of systemic help you require? Um, I would put it in three categories, right? One is access to facilities and you know infrastructure, which I think the government has opened up through this new in space uh, you know entity that has come up. Uh, the other one would be uh, to move away from uh, a support system for the industry, uh, which will happen only for vendors of ISRO, right? So I think previously we had a capacity building program uh, as the only way in which ISRO could directly invest money with a private player. Basically, it's like transferring technology and allowing the vendor to productionize its products. If that could change into directly supporting other people to also indigenously develop their own technology and ISRO buying it from them, I think ISRO actually has already done it with mm. the sample with Bellatrix. Mm. Now, if that can be done at scale with other players as well, I think that would be a very interesting, uh, you know, angle. And uh, I think finally, uh, there are already grants available, right? You have the TDB grant, you have the GDF, you have mul multiple options of these. Uh, I think the size of these grants and the uh, aspect of what kind of projects will get these could be a little more broadened to allow for some of these initiatives like you know what uh, we are doing, what Aways is doing or anyone else in the country is doing to also be captured within that umbrella. Okay. I think those things would help. Okay, the, so again the reason I'm having this telecast here okay, is just to educate and inspire because we always whine and complain about our country and this happening and that happening and this issue and that issue and this person name called that person and this person sent this stupid tweet. Uh, if you are working in the insurance sector, you need to be looking at space now, okay? There's a huge, I mean, if they end up doing a launch a week and each launch is doing 40, 50, you know, satellites of these nano satellites, okay? If something goes wrong, they're going to require an insurance framework for this. Uh, you're going to require an education framework for this. Uh, you're going to have to provide the R&D facilities. You're going to pro be providing, you know, banking services, which are, which are going to be uh, looking at things differently, the way the, the naval system works, the defense systems. Uh, work and if you are if you are big and small, uh, innovation is going to be the key. In terms of companies out there, these are companies offering you services. The services are not just for government, okay, or for defense. Their services are for for you. Uh, Pixel is going to be a potential future customer for Agni Cool, okay. But Pixel's future customer is you. You are watching this telecast, so you need to start understanding what you can if you are in real estate or you are in agriculture or you are in town planning or heck if you are if you are building your farm okay uh, and you want to map it out uh, it should become as ubiquitous as that and that's where we are headed okay so let me quick quick thought from from uh, professor chakravarti then my colleague jay prakash is standing by in bengaluru he's got the chairman of isro with him uh, J jp before we come to you quick last thought from our studios here professor professor chakravarti uh, you know, we talk a lot about Agni Cool, but the other companies, uh, Aero, Strobilos, uh, X2 Fuels, Galaxy, what all are you up to, sir? Inspire us, make us excited. Yeah, I think that's a very good question because uh, what we represent here with uh, Agni Cool, or even as a matter of fact, uh, credit should be given um, in this particular conversation, uh, uh, contextually to uh, Pixel, 
is the emergence of a large number of bold deep tech startups that inspire a generation of engineers. And uh, this is something that I'm actually extremely passionate about. Uh, we are uh, we are actually the largest engineering uh, you know college uh, in nation uh, in, in the world. We are putting out so many engineers in the world, and uh, and and it's it's actually a shame that many of them have to look for some other things than what they have actually learned putting four or five years of their education in. And uh, but today, for example, even other other than that, we can learn a lot from you know the internet itself. Uh, the, uh, the the pandemic has actually shown the shown that you need to you don't need to really go to your classroom to learn. Considering that there is like so much opportunity to learn, we need to create equivalent opportunities for them to earn. And that's exactly what uh, we, 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 are, we are doing over here with all these very deep tech startups like we have not seen anywhere else in the world. I would like to pride ourselves by saying that whatever you listed is something that's very unique that's happening in India hmm. uh, out of IIT Madras. And I would like you to actually cover that a little bit more uh, when, when time permits. Uh, there's a lot to okay, say. Okay, I'll come back to you before Okay, before we close. Or you know what, uh, uh, Professor, we will do a separate conversation. Let me, let me see, send a team now. I've sent a team now. Uh, to the to the to the location side, so that we can certainly certainly send a team to IIT Madras. We love to see your R&D lab. You know, speak to the vice, interview the vice chancellor. Uh, for people watching the broadcast, uh, we are in touch with uh, uh, members of the DMK government as well. They promised us they are also going to come on board on this. We'll be interviewing them shortly. Uh, this is a mini summit. I'm I'm going to do a bigger summit. Uh, we are in touch with you know uh, uh, people at the PMO who of course oversee all of this for ISRO. Uh, try to get the minister Jitendra Singh is there. Uh, to really get this energy energy going. But I'm going to put all of that aside for a second because, uh, as I mentioned, Jay Prakash is standing by in Bengaluru. He has the current chairman of his role. He's talking about the spaceport and what the plans are and the, and the detailing because the devil is always in the detail. We all agree on the larger picture. So let's let's take the opportunity, JP, if you can, if you can hear us uh, and you're ready, please take it away. India's premier space research organizations calendar for 2022 looks very busy and uh, NewsX as part of its special cover story uh, on the second spaceport we have with us ISRO chairman uh, S. Somnath. Sir, thank you so much for joining and speaking to NewsX. Um, we are uh, doing some ground reports and and looking at the developments as far as uh, uh, the Kulasekara Patnam spaceport is concerned. Uh, as of now, where does the project stand, sir? Uh, this project is currently in the land acquisitions phase. Uh, we need to have uh, 2,500 acres of land, uh, very close to the sea. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the launch point will come somewhere middle of this. So we need to give sufficient space for safety consideration. So that's why this much of land is needed. So right now, almost 1,000 acres land has been acquired. But then remaining land is to be acquired. The process is on. We believe some few months we can complete it. Yeah, um, I saw uh, when I was waiting for you, uh, Vikram Sarabhai book, and um, he was the one who initiated the Sri Arikota from 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 brick yes. to what it is today. So you will be also part of history, a legacy that you are going to create. What does this project en uh, envisage? Okay, uh, coming to the legacy, of course, uh, we are all part of this. It is uh, what we are enjoying today are the work of <laughs> many many generations of yes, people. Yes. Uh, so we salute all of them. Yeah. And uh, this uh, particular launch site, Kolasekara Patanov, has been something that we have been considering discussing for many years. At least now there is an action to, you know, you know acquire the land and then build this launch port. Uh, probably you know that uh, why this launch site, uh, the Sri Arikota, has its own advantages. Because it is an island and has yes. uh, and very less inhabit inhabitation, and then we have a huge safety margin from the launch port to the habitated area where this essential requirement. Right. Uh, but it has its own disadvantages. Uh, mm -hmm. The disadvantage is that if you have to launch towards south, mm -hmm. then you need, you can't go straight because Sri Lanka is there. We call we conduct a load lo, dog leg maneuver. We go a little bit towards the, the uh, east, then take a turn then towards deviate, the south. Yeah. and the, So this whole process, maneuvering, uh, maneuvering uh, reduce the payload of the given launch vehicle. Right. The PSLV right. also lose uh, payload on this account. Yes. So uh, then we looked at why not we launch uh, directly southward from the southernmost point or somewhere near to it. Hmm. Hmm. That is a reason for identifying hmm. Kulasekara Patanam. And it has an advantage specifically for launching towards south. Hmm. Uh, and uh, may not be a suitable uh, launch site for launching towards east. Mm. So uh, that's why it is chosen. There are a lot of advantages. Uh, 
when when can we actually see the realization of uh, the second space port <coughs> see uh, you know i am just telling that the land acquisition will run in another few months mm. after that uh, we need to start the construction process we have already a project of how to build this uh, has already been cleared mm. uh, and the design of those uh, launch pad the facilities mm. infrastructure requirement are all been detailed mm. so now after the land has been acquired we need to place a peg where it is going to be so do a survey you know survey of the land its terrain then find out uh, that contact the necessary measurements at that location mm. like the soil and that you know ex- example uh, the lo- the mm. leveling then um, load bearing capacity estimation which will run for a few more months mm. after that we do the detailed design of the launch pad mm. the jet deflector and things like that which will come there mm. then design the buildings to suit the terrain okay so this process will run for again for another few months after that we have to tender it out mm. uh, the construction of this which may last at least something like 18 months to 24 months of time uh, after that we will be able to launch so about roughly around 2 years you two, can 2 2 years plus because 2 years is only after starting of the construction to realization right, right. 18 months to 24 months but yeah. the initial process i believe it will take another 10 months or so all right uh, so once the second port is ready space port is ready uh, the traffic will be diverted from say here what are the kind of traffic we'll see in this port compared to the new new one see this uh, this port can handle only small class of launch vehicle it cannot handle huge class of launch vehicle primarily because of the safety considerations see the, typically from the where the rocket is launched to the nearest inhabited place we need to have a distance of at least 5 km for that uh, 2500 acres is not enough it has to be much bigger mm. but that land is not there at uh, mm. at uh, at this place so we have to limit the the danger zones and corresponding to the size of the rocket mm. when we why uh, still this kolashagra patanam is there is a new class of rocket which has come that is called the small satellite launch vehicle mm. and there is an emerging emerging market for small satellite launches mm. so for this we have now developed a sslv mm. and this in maiden flights will be from sri harikota mm. but its payload capability cannot be fully exploited mm. if you launch from sri harikota because this rocket has to make the dog leg maneuver correct but if you launch from uh, golashekara patanam then its payload can be mm. the full full capacity can be enjoyed mm. so this launch pad is specifically designed for two things one is to launch sslv mm. or any future small launchers which are likely to emerge in this country mm. uh, probably you know there are many startups working right. in, in right. Uh, launcher area right. and all they can they can go to this new launch pad and for a mission that demand launched in south run right. direction they can right. directly use them so that's where uh, the in space come and uh, that's where there is future for in space correct, correct. what what are the developments around in space uh, that's a conglomeration of government as well as private entities coming into uh, the future is is the sky is the limit so no currently kind of? currently we are looking at how we can engage uh, private entities more into space program yes if you have to develop the economy of space sector the only way that the investment has to be from private sector yes and they won't just like that invest we mm. they need to see a business plan mm. so we are trying to see how we can engage with the space industries in india into space ecosystem mm. to develop a business plan and develop corresponding elements mm. the elements are one is rockets mm. spacecraft and applications yes so in this sector currently there are startups mm. and also established companies mm. established companies are doing the currently the space based uh, contract development or right. b- building for isro already yes. our rockets are built or built in industry so they are going to take up the next level of mm. taking over those building of this rocket on their own right y- using the ip or knowledge from isro mm. and another thing which is happening is uh, the startups at least some 50 startups are there 2 3 4 in launch vehicle some are 10 mm. in satellites and remaining in application sectors mm. they have reasonably in you know, a good funds to kick off the work but then more funds need to flow into uh, mm. into them they need to harness a little more of technologies and develop their first of rockets mm. and similarly satellites also they are trying to develop the first of technologies and then build those small satellites into application segment or also some people are coming yeah. now this area has to become a business you know Conducive, uh, the system there, there must be money flow and yeah. profitability yes. so this is yet, i need to yet to see this mm. but then at least there is a starting mm. you know when with the starting we hope that slowly mm. uh, these people will find their markets yes. there is a huge market there is no market like india available in you know, where there is a my question stems from the fact that what elon musk has done to us there's yeah. lot of chat amongst the youth in this country they also want to do something 
in the last 10 years he's catapulted himself uh, to the position that he is now talking about giving internet from <laughs> satellites and you know the scientific temperament is discussing these things especially in the younger generations see let us not uh, jump into conclusions that elon musk uh, is in us and we will have uh, another set of elon musk here <laughs> i think i know i have no 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 you, you want to be more practical no no i am i am a pakka practical person and uh, i would like to see that uh, mm. there is a substantial growth in space economy and activity in india mm. i will i will only limit to that okay. see the elon musk is a, is a happening because of various reasons uh, in us mm. the, there was a decline in space program in uh, isro and uh, no, sorry in nasa. Uh, in nasa because of space shuttle retirement mm. and uh, there was a nasa was creating elon musk mm. uh, primarily to create the industry funded the launch vehicle development and human flight development right. in private entity to happen mm. so it was a strategy adopted by nasa to overcome the problem of governmental funding mm. so correspondingly such people emerged mm. it's not only elon musk there were established players like titan you uh, know atlas mm. there were so many launch vehicles already in private domain in spacecraft, us spacecraft basically no launch vehicles were there spacecraft were built by boeing uh, mm. uh, and so many other other people lockheed martin also built spacecrafts so mm. compared to india there is an established private players in us yeah okay but when you talk about india, india the yeah. the problem we are facing today there are mm. no established space players in india industries mm. though mm. there are big industry houses yes. none of them found space mm. an attractive a domain at all mm. to create investments of thousands of crores mm. to create a business opportunity around space sector mm. what you are seeing today is an interesting thing that they are now slowly seeing the future mm. big mm. business houses are seeing the potential that space can still be an mm. you know economically viable But, proposition yes so only that's when, largely the indian philosophy of uh, isro <laughs> where you know we always look at yeah. the economy and in you know, how to reduce the cost it is it is like that only see business will grow only if there is a profitability you know yeah. no, no 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 businessman will invest to make a loss mm. elon musk also is not invested it to create a business possibility there, there was a very famous line you know uh, the cost of chandrayaan 2 was lesser than the movie which costed the, the gravity movie which they made in the yeah, us definitely because mm. we in india we do everything very frugally Mm. you know our engineering way of doing things and doing is always frugal mm. but in private companies when you do it in india it may also turn out to be similar i don't have any doubt about it that, mm. that's another topic we are discussing mm. the discussion is on how a high level space economy will come in india through private entrepreneurs this is a question so if this has to happen the business houses have to see potential in this right. say for example when you see there is a huge amount of market in communication infrastructure in launching their own spacecrafts carrying out the, the communication infrastructure through supporting it through the space based services they will invest in building satellites right. and when they build in uh, investing satellite they will build the corresponding ground infrastructure which will generate huge amount of business opportunity right. and similarly they may also find it economical to launch their own rockets yes. for their satellites mm. then huge bro- satellites will be built here mm. Uh, rockets will be built here yeah. similarly the the if they are successful in bringing foreign satellites for launch in india in a commercial manner mm. now then this area sector will grow do you think this conversation is right now happening in in space committee wherein private private players are also uh, interested to be a partner with isro they are already there see mm. there are lot of proposals in in space currently they are discussing their board is discussing mm. they they are all small proposals mm. see currently they are looking at developing certain rockets they are looking at some uh, mechanisms they are launching some experiments like that mm. but uh, okay but uh, we are facilitating that discussion yes. we are enabling them to develop that through the support of isro technically mm. uh, the infrastructure in isro will be shared for them to take up that work yeah. but they are all baby steps today yes what we need is a huge step you know giant step mm-hmm. now for that to happen of course these baby steps must become successful right. and now it it should demonstrate to the public that uh, the confidence in working in space sector in private industry is still possible mm. so what our goal today is to demonstrate to the community yes the startups are going to be successful they it will be possible to develop rockets in private sector in india also Right. and it is possible to develop satellites in a private lab in india and then still achieve certain 
useful missions right. if you demonstrate it then the big players will pitch in yeah and then there will be a sudden change in the economy mm. or the so ecosystem. the hesitancy will will, will go away so our current right now they see uh, space as a big big black hole where they lose a lot of money yeah <laughs> <laughs> they, they will, everybody will have the fear yeah. see pl- let us understand that launch vehicle business for example rocket design and development is a high risk business mm. you invest thousands of crores and the first launch it fails Hmm. second launch it fails hmm. then third launch you will not have money left to launch right. so whether you will be able to recover that cost and still go forward you look hmm. you read the story of elon musk yeah. you will understand that he went through hmm. failures hmm. because he had enough backup and yeah. so he could come back and then succeed in the subsequent launches hmm. and once you are successful hmm. everybody forgets about the failure. failures <laughs> <laughs> right sir sir uh, talking about uh, isro's calendar this year uh, yeah. looks like very busy what are the main events that you know the country is looking forward is rose looking forward this year see we have a mandate to launch certain spacecrafts today which is looking from the user side we have launched one radar imaging satellite recently using pslv we have another ocean observation satellites again a user demanded satellite to observe ocean there are departments of government of india looking at it so we are getting ready with the satellites uh to to be launched again using pslv yeah then we have small satellite launch vehicle which i mentioned some time back yeah, yeah which has its maiden launch has to happen this year mm-hmm. and after that two more launches we are targeting to happen mm-hmm. this year so three launches of development of sslv must mm-hmm. happen mm-hmm. we have to have the gslv you know there was a failure in the last mission right. uh, we have corrected identified the failure yeah. after correcting it we have to have the launch mm-hmm. launching a navigation satellite mm-hmm. to support the navi constellation Uh, system and launches remaining navic satellites which are already in the process of realization we have two launches of gaganyan related mission yes that's uh, that's yeah it. that one uh, we, we want to look at how the gaganyan mission abort sequence these are unmanned uh, no that's this this is to demonstrate the abort sequence of the mission okay. because uh, before we send anybody to up there we must first demonstrate uh, we can save right. them right. so saving part is the first demonstration yeah. so we have a test vehicle hmm. which is a liquid engine based vehicle yeah. and that test vehicle will be launched with a crew hmm. module hmm. and the abort system hmm. and we will intentionally abort it hmm. and then show show that the abort sequence work and hmm. then we are able to recover the crew module safely hmm. this will also be repeated this year we want to do two times okay. and show that the abort system is working well so when is the manned machine sir the the training is over apparently and uh, and we and we are preparing for that big you know, event that i can't comment on the date of the manned mission i can only say that it is a, an event that will sequentially happen hmm. because many steps are to go towards a human hmm. space flight mission yes when you send somebody you know if, especially from india we want we, we want to make sure they will come back right yes <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to make sure then we need to take mm. all those steps which will give you the guarantee mm. and also the guarantee to the public also and also those people who are going to take that risk of flying mm. that we are in a position to bring them back yeah. it requires a very carefully calibrated engineering decisions as mm. well as tests and demonstrations right so what i mentioned just now is the first step of them mm. we have developing the crew module we are developing the abort system we are mm. developing the intelligence in the rocket to understand yeah. there is a failure going mm. to happen and mm. abort it mm. so this too will be demonstrated first mm. followed by that we will be contact acting an unmanned mission in the full vehicle gsl okay. mr3 okay and un- after this assessing all this flight data mm. then we go for a second unmanned mission right. with a little more features in that okay. for example in that second mission we will include the real crew environment mm. environment and life support systems mm. and we have to test all of them work well in the mission right and uh, then Mm. after that we will be taking some more abort missions mm. because mm. we have another 3 4 abort missions which will happen over lay with this unmanned missions yes and after analyzing all these 7 8 missions mm. then we will take a view the on the final mission so right. it is not one launch that uh, okay uh, put it's a man a sequence the, that has to go one after the other and one second one will be a result of the first one will go into the second one right. so we we have to make incremental progress right so you are going to draw inferences from each of these launches and then correct. improvise it correct, correct. all right chandrayaan yes uh, is most uh, eagerly awaited uh, is chandrayaan 2 still giving output what about chandrayaan 3 we supposed to see the launch in august yeah chandrayaan 2 is still working and uh, today also we had a, a review of the chandrayaan 2 and how we can make some data available for science community it's excellent uh, way it's working the data is still coming to uh, all the science community hmm. Uh, Chandrayaan three is the, in the building stage. Mm. Uh, currently, we are in the testing the mo- module okay. in the propulsion system because we, you know, the last time we yes. had a problem with uh, that. The last thrust was was lost. Yeah. So to overcome that, there is a 
change in the propulsion system. Mm. The propulsion system is undergoing testing mm. at uh, Sriharikot, at uh, Liquid Propulsion Center at uh, Mahindragiri, mm. as well as in a new test facility we have established at uh, Sriharikota okay. in the suspended hanging condition, mm. uh, demonstrating the landing mm. you know, sequences. Mm. Uh, so it is an integration of propulsion plus the computer and sensor system mm. undergoing mm. the testing. The results are really good and uh, every night there is some test going on nowadays. Fantastic. So uh, we, we will analyze the test data. Mm. Meantime, the satellite building has nearly reached a final phase. Okay. But before we decide to launch, mm. uh, we would like to look at all the test data yeah. and analyze the software, the hardware. Mm. And I want to tell you plainly that we would like to go very, very cautiously this time. <laughs> because we know how to go to moon is well proven. Yes. The only thing that we need this to prove is how it lands. And mm. it has to be error free. Mm. the best of our abilities mm. and all test program recommended through the re previous recommendation committees etc we want to do mm. and uh, of course there are everything is not smooth what was the critical issue that you learned in the last uh, landing sir where where did we go wrong and how is the improvisation this time See, if you can put in layman's language yeah i will put uh, i will put it like this because we are we are trying to land in in earth itself is difficult you know yeah. the, there is atmosphere the gravity effects etc the rocket is such a way that such a thing that you can never test it in the real environment at any point in time. Mm. When you may build a rocket, the first time when you launch, it is never launched before. Mm. It is launched only in a computer. Right. Suppose you take a car. Mm. The, before the car is launched, mm. it would have run thousands of kilometers without hiding its uh, real face. No. Yeah. You put they paint it in a different color and run through across India different terrains and prove it that uh, the engine the suspension system the uh, everything is working yeah. very well. After that, the company makes a huge you know grand announcement of right. launching. For a rocket, is it possible? <laughs> it is simply not possible. Yeah. The very first time it will see that rough terrain mm. when you when you actually takes off. Now look at Chandrayaan two. Uh, it has we have never gone to moon mm. and never go and experience the type of gravity field of moon mm. in earth mm. and we have never navigated mm. on a surface of surface where you have to identify the location where to land mm. through sensors which you have put in that mm. and we are not actually measuring it they are mm. using uh, certain type of sensors to mm. measure altitude elevation mm. speed etc mm. and looking at camera and imaging the surface and identifying this is the place to land mm. so in all these there are uh, limits of errors mm. and we test all these uh, systems and too many variables too many variables and and variable has its own bounds mm. so in technical terms you say lower bound and upper bound mm. if any bounds are exceeded mm. your algorithm the software which is sitting inside right malfunction yes. so some such a malfunction really happened mm. that your threshold of working mm. limits bounds on which it has to work has exceeded mm. so then software has its own problem mm. so this is what we are trying to correct in the subsequent missions. How we can look at uh, a, a complex system with autonomy. Mm. The whole craft is now autonomous. Yes. You know, autonomous cars, mm. which will drive in the... Right. Uh, no, the the Google cars that uh, we see. Yeah. They, they are just coming. Mm. Now, they are not yet come to the market. We are talking about Chandrayaan. Chandrayaan. Chandrayaan here, do, so fully relaxed. doing an autonomous landing. Yes. You, you, you think challenges this are, is much yeah. more challenging. Yes, yes. You know, here in Earth, at least it is standing. Even if you put apply brake, it will stop there. Mm. But what will happen to Chandrayaan 2 when uh, lander, if you apply brake, right. right. it will simply fall down. Mm. So, it's a really complex problem of hardware and software and algorithm and mm. ability to foresee mm. the unknowns. Mm. Of course, our error was in terms of our bounds of errors were exceeded. Mm. So this is what we understood mm. and we need to strengthen both the hardware and software. Mm. When you talk about uh, the uh, reusable launch vehicles, uh, yeah. um, this will actually cut the cost of uh, entire operations of launching a rocket. Um, where are we and uh, how are we progressing on that? See, our reusable rocket is not meant for cutting down the cost. Mm. What you are working on. Mm. The reusable rocket, we have two classes of reusable rocket. Uh, the winged reusable rocket and an expendable rocket recovered. So, why I will give an example like this. The winged reusable rocket is like space shuttle. Mm. The space shuttle was one of the costliest reusable rocket <laughs> in the world. Mm. So, reusability doesn't mean it's always cost reduction. Mm. Uh, the winged reusable rockets are used in the upper stages. Mm -hmm. And it is recovered because the payload inside is much more valuable mm. than the rocket itself. So mm. it can bring a spacecraft back from orbit. Mm. It can take human beings to a space station to construct something. Mm. So it is designed for a specific purpose of reusability. Yes. Whereas uh, the lower stages of a rocket, if you are recovering through retro propulsion and vertical landing as SpaceX does, you can reuse it and then bring down the cost. Mm -hmm. So reusability has two elements. 
bring down the cost if you recover the lower stages bring down <coughs> use for a specific purpose if you bring bring the upper stages currently we are working on upper stage recovery using winter craft like what is done in space shuttle here we will be able to launch a craft in the orbit do some experiments deploying it or or doing some strategic missions or something and after that it will come back and land so currently we are working on a landing and demonstration after that we will be going to the orbit uh, we have still have we have plans to look at the lower stage recovery also vertical landing demonstration so which is a new project we are now currently envisaging so a uh, last question before i let you go off um, the isro is the pride of the country and last time the prime minister was here this was quite an emotional moment for your former chairman also uh, how is isro gathered itself and how are you bracing for the challenges how is the atmosphere in um, especially after you taking over as the new chairman a couple of months ago see we we had a, we had an excellent years uh, when the last chairman was here we had many new programs approved which includes our continuation program of the projects the reusable launch vehicle the air breathing propulsion system new satellites were approved but then the last year on and off there was a new change of vision which is uh, nothing but the reform process in space sector so the reform proce- process has brought in new challenges in front of us and new opportunities so this is what i am going through now after coming to this uh, seat i have looked at the reform process how we can make it happen uh, this is a agenda for me government has announced the reforms but as secretary of department of space my responsibility to implement, implement. it so uh, here the implementation happens only when we do certain ground work what are the ground works essentially you have to bring down policies first time my goal is to bring down the space policy of 2022 which is currently drafted and it will be released soon after due approval after that we have to put up a space act space bill in front of the parliament so that we can enact it so that private enterprises entities when they do space activity are governed and controlled regularized and authorized this is the second step third step is in, in space has to become fully operational so that that was my work in the last one or two months mm. working with the uh, mm. the in space chairman mm. their board and also staff it mm. establish its operational centers mm. uh, start working with the private entities and then engage them with the isro activities so this is Uh, we could do at least four 40 such proposals came and in space was successful in dialoguing with the isro centers and engage this activity further next uh, milestone is to see that in this coming years uh, the covid is now subsided let yes. us see how we can ramp up the production of launch vehicles and satellites mm. and as i mentioned earlier how this coming years launch manifesto can be substantial Mm. so that we show up that there is a good work going on so mm. that our industries partners mm. they have enough of task at at, mm. at hand mm. and we also meet the national demands for making our launches and satellites which mm. are already committed mm. how to achieve it in very short point of time mm. the lastly is to create a vision for at least for next 20 30 years of time mm. so space sector with the reforms the vision also changes Uh, there are tasks which are responsible isro is responsible uh, department of space is responsible we are also looking at what all tasks which we have been doing so far can be done in an industry ecosystem so that the space economy is growing so we have framing our own vision document in the coming days which will be again discussed at appropriate for our for uh, announcement you, you, your answer actually tempts me to ask one last question uh, academia don't you think it's high time that we bring in more of uh, space uh, program celoi Uh, in the engineering courses push for it and get industry partnership also into it we are already doing it mm. we have already a capacity building program office here with a director mm. he is looking at establishing various uh, centers units in incubation centers uh, ecosystems in uh, institute of higher learning mm. this uh, and we have a we have good funding for all these people to do joint research activities so this is going uh, currently it is going on and we we continuously engage with the academia for specific research topics last month uh, we have announced a uh, respond basket mm. in which all the research problem that isro wants to look at it mm. by the academy has been already announced in our site mm. and many of them will come to us now with the proposals whether professors or institutions or students who want to take up some other research topic mm. we will review internally and fund it to over a period of time and review regularly and then take up this so this activity is going on and we also have space projects or space programs starting at some universities mm. last this uh, two weeks back we have announced two or three weeks back i believe uh, announced a sadish thawan space science center at jammu university central mm. university of jammu mm. where they will be starting as new program on codes mm. in space space science and technology and students will 
will be enrolled uh, as part of the university and, and we will be supporting from the isros institute that iast at tiruvannadapuram mm. we'll collaborate with the university in jammu so okay. uh, jammu to travel production also we made a minister of uh, our space uh, minister of state has announced this yes. so a lot of activities are going in this direction all right sir i wish you all the best uh, for your uh, chairmanship and also uh, the calendar of events that's going to unfold this year thank you that was isro chairman uh, jp is somna talking to news x okay. giving no details on the space port Thanks a lot, JP. Uh, you know, it's a it's a big it's a big big thank you to Chairman Somnath for getting in that deep dive with us. And JP, thank you very much for you know really going into it over a proper thirty minute conversation. You know, not just uh, surface touching everyone. We are not done. We are not done. I promised you that we are going to do everything that we can to put this front and center for a national conversation. And we've been doing that because Parliament is in session. Uh, in delhi and while we are discussing all other news which is going to be I mentioned you know when gorakhpur this is happening and in karoli uh, so, uh, riots have taken place and somebody is fighting over some speaker is too loud or you know well uh, we managed to catch up i think we have uh, vinay sarasbuddhe uh, he is a member of parliament uh, bjp uh, he is speaking to us uh, my colleague rakesh is standing by rakesh take it away hamare sath bjp ke varishth neta vinay sarasbuddhe ji hain vinay ji जिस तरह से इसरो ने जो है तमिलनाडु में स्पेस सेंटर जो वहाँ पर स्थापित करने का उसे किस तरह से देखते हैं आप कितना बड़ा अचीवमेंट बढ़िया बात है क्योंकि देश के विभिन्न भागों में अंतरिक्ष संबंधी जो शोध और उससे संबंधित जो गतिविधियाँ है वो होने की ज़रूरत तो है ही क्योंकि ये पूरा हमारा अंतरिक्ष विज्ञान जो है वो ज्ञान प्रचार और प्रसार का एक साधन बन रहा है तो गुजरात में केरल में आंध्र प्रदेश में ऐसे काम तो हो ही रहे हैं इसरो के अन्य राज्यों में भी इसके केंद्र खुले और कुछ न कुछ गतिविधि हो इसका स्थानिक लोगों को जरूर लाभ हो क्या आप मानते हैं कि ट्रिब्यूट कलाम जी के स्वाभाविक रूप में ये तो एक बड़ी अच्छी बात है रामेश्वरम जो कलाम साहब की कर जन्मभूमि है तो उसके निकट अगर कहीं ये हो रहा है मुझे जानकारी नहीं मगर कलाम जी तमिलनाडु के थे तो तमिलनाडु में होने की एक प्रासंगिकता धन्यवाद राकेश कुमार सिंह इंडिया न्यूज दिल्ली दैट वाज विनय सरस्वती ऑफ द बीजेपी आई बिलीव राकेश इज आल्सो कॉट अप विद नासिर हुसैन कांग्रेस फ्रॉम कर्नाटका लेट्स लिसन इन इसरो तमिलनाडु में एक केंद्र स्थापित करने जा रहा है और ये भारत के लिए खास तौर पर जो है स्पेस क्षेत्र के लिए एक अचीवमेंट के तौर पर हमारे साथ बातचीत करने के लिए कांग्रेस के वरिष्ठ नेता और सांसद नासिर हुसैन साहब नासिर जी किस तरह से देखते हैं इस देखिए हिंदुस्तान में हिंदुस्तान के साइंसदान हिंदुस्तान के साइंटिस्ट एक लंबे अरसे से बहुत मेहनत कर रहे हैं काम कर रहे हैं और साइंटिफिक इन्वेंशंस हिंदुस्तान में बहुत हुए हैं हम लोगों को स्पेस में काफ़ी हमारा इन रहे हैं अब बहुत सारे इसमें साइंटिस्ट जो मेहनत किए अब मैं नाम गिनाना नहीं चाहूँगा लेकिन हर गवर्नमेंट स्पेस रिसर्च को हमारे साइंटिस्ट को सभी इंकरेज करने का काम की है बेंगलुरु में इसरो पहले रहा है हिंदुस्तान के कोने कोने में अलग अलग जगह हम लोगों ने सेंटर्स बनाए थे हम लोग बहुत सारे सैटेलाइट्स को स्पेस में भेजने का काम किए थे और ये तमिलनाडु में बनाने से क्योंकि वहाँ पे ए पी जे अब्दुल कलाम साहब वहाँ से आते हैं बहुत बड़े आप मानते हैं ट्रिब्यूट एक और उनको ट्रिब्यूट देना चाहिए क्योंकि एक बहुत बड़े साइंटिस्ट थे देश के राष्ट्रपति थे और उन्होंने जिस तरह से काम किया जिस सिंप्लिसिटी से अपने आप को बना के रखा था उनके लिए एक ट्रिब्यूट देना भी चाहिए और सारे साइंटिस्ट जो इसमें मेहनत कर रहे हैं छोटा से छोटा बड़े से बड़ा जो साइंटिस्ट जो इस डायरेक्शन में काम कर रहा है उन सबको भी ट्रिब्यूट मिलना चाहिए इससे क्या स्पेस के क्षेत्र में और जो हैं युवा साइंटिस्ट आए हैं इससे बढ़ाव मिलेगा नहीं ऑलरेडी बहुत सारे लोग काम कर रहे हैं अगर जितना हम एक्सपैंड करेंगे उतने साइंटिस्ट यहाँ पे मिलेंगे आ, हिंदुस्तान में खासकर साइंस आईटी दो सेक्टर्स में जो हम काफ़ी हम लोगों ने पास में भी बहुत मेहनत की है इन्वेंशनस किए हैं और अभी भी बहुत सारे युवा साइंटिस्ट जो है बहुत मेहनत करके काम कर रहे हैं मुझे लग रहा है कि जितना आप स्पेस रिसर्च में स्पेस क्रिएट करेंगे उतने आपको साइंटिस्ट हिंदुस्तान में मिल जाएंगे ये इसकी ऑलरेडी जो हम न्यू पिछले 30-40 साल 50 साल से डाली गई थी एक सी एम के आई बनाए गए थे एक सी एक इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेजेस खोले गए थे एक सी एक रिसर्च सेंटर्स बनाए गए थे आज उसी की देन है कि आज देश जो है उस डायरेक्शन में लगातार बढ़ते जा रहा है धन्यवाद राकेश कुमार सिंह इंडिया न्यूज दिल्ली 
Yes, we are celebrating uh, our technical and scientific achievements, but we are also celebrating how Tamil Nadu has uh, emerged as a frontline sector. And I have with me on the telecast uh, Dr. Srimati Kesan, founder and CEO of Space Kids. It's another uh, startup that's coming out of, of Chennai. <coughs> I've been told, uh, Dr. Kesan, that you are uh, the only ones to have successfully launched 18 balloon satellites, two suborbital satellites and two orbital satellites which have been built by students. So I have to ask you then on obvious terms, uh, how excited are, are you about this spaceport coming up in Tamil Nadu? Um, it's, a, it's a great question, uh, Yash, I should say that, uh, you know, when uh, we launch the uh, rockets, generally itself, we say that uh, Sri Harikota is in a vital place and the launches are very, very efficient. Now, Kulasekara Patnam is even more, it's going to be efficient because uh, whenever a rocket takes off, it takes a swerve around Sri Lanka and then goes into the polar orbit. So now, you know, they can actually avoid that swerve and go directly into the South Pole. So that way, you know, for any rocket, it is the fuel. The fuel consumption is the most important thing for making the rockets most expensive to carry the satellites and everything. So now the bus will become cheaper so we can have more passengers. So in simple terms, if I have to say. So when we have more passengers, that's going to you know give us more economy. And in the space race, I think now India is in a key position, okay. especially after the Ukraine war. Okay. You know, we we are really in a key position. So we have to actually take chance upon this and we have to get, uh, you know, this SSLV speeded up and, uh, you know, I think uh, okay. we will so, so, play so a you, you major, are general role, excited major about role in the space Okay, industry. so where, where do you see this advancing, you know, the space program? Because we, are, we understand that, uh, you know, we need to create capacity building, right? And capacity and infrastructure, we know that right now we are still at the sort of land collection stage. Uh, then the port will have to be built, so that's employment opportunities for people who are going to be involved in construction, uh, for uh, creating of cities, of ancillary facilities, of internet and this and that. You know, where does this take our space program? Yes, it's a, you know, it's definitely going to help the space program because uh, the small, uh, you know, spacecraft, that is the satellites and everything, what happens is when it uh, is carried by a PSLV, that is from India, if it is from Russia or from America, you know, one kg of satellite itself costs around, costs around $25,000. So what, what happens is if we are able to have this SSLV here in the second port, I think we can economize that. Okay. And if we are able to economize the pricing of launching a satellite, everybody is going to turn okay. their head towards Okay, India. so you know, we were talking about during the course of our conversation on these smaller satellites, the nano satellites. Now, when it, when it comes to that, uh, where are you hoping that the global, you know, in the global competition sweepstakes in terms of price advantage and, you know, and, and cost, cost per kilo uh, payload launched, uh, how do we then as India, both public sector, which is ISRO, which anyway does things at one third the cost of NASA, in the private sector become globally competitive? Uh, pricing, you know, for anything, pricing is very, very important. And India mm -hmm. is very, very successful in its, uh, you know, it has been very, very successful in uh, launching the PSLVs. So SSLV is also going to be highly competitive and it's going to carry 500 kilos of satellite. So which means to say the uh, there is going to be a continuous uh, flight. It's not going to be like, you know, we are going to have two or three flights in a year. You know, we are going to have continuous flights. So when we have continuous flights, then there are a lot of people who are going to be looking at India for launching their satellites. And now space is the hottest thing everywhere. So people are looking at SpaceX, hmm. you know, because of the war, people are looking at SpaceX. SpaceX is expensive. And uh, if we are able to bring them all to India, the Europeans, as well as, you know, even the Americans, if we have to say, if you are able to bring them into our market, I think our economy is definitely going to boost. Okay. Also, I would like to tell here 
there is a huge gap in the suborbital launches hmm. there are very few rockets which are carrying uh, you know payloads to suborbit so if india if isro could think on those grants okay. to launch more vehicles on the suborbital level i think that's going to also bring in a lot of revenue for isro for our okay. country okay all right dr kesan that sounds sounds fascinating great idea out there i'm hoping people watching this <coughs> think that there are things that can be put into suborbit balloon technology is one of them uh, today you can have you know solar powered planes that can literally fly forever or fly for several years without maintenance uh, that can provide certain kind of facilities lots of emerging tech out there let's get excited about it and again getting excited about it certainly is my colleague rakesh in parliament he's now got uh, anubhav mohanty member of parliament from uh, the biju janata dal joining us uh, rakesh take it away so welcome step uh, because uh, the youth will definitely be happy and benefited and it's uh, it's something for the nation and uh, as an odia i feel proud that uh, we have uh, such centers in odisha before this in chandipur baleshwar and uh, of course uh, to face the uh, future challenges uh, such uh, space centers such institutes must be taken up properly and i believe the students will definitely get a lot of things to learn and lot of things to uh, make in future do you think it is tribute to kalam of course it should be because he is the man behind everything so youth idolize him and i too so it should be a tribute to him only okay that was anubhav mohanty uh, member of parliament from the bjd uh, arvind savant of the ship sena now also speaking to my colleague rakesh on this new tamil nadu space port listen in hamare sath baat chit karne ke liye shiv sena ke sansad arvind savant saab hain अरविंद जी ए, ए, केंद्र सरकार ने जो इसरो है इसरो जो है तमिलनाडु में एक स्पेस सेंटर, सेंटर का जो करने जा रहा है उसको किस तरह से देखते हैं आप अरे वो क्या बात है गर्व की बात है वो इसरो मतलब हमारे देश के लिए गवर्न कर सकते हैं उसके ऊपर गर्व कर सकते हैं ऐसे वैज्ञानिक है सब उनके पास देखोगे तो पता चलेगा पूरा डेडिकेटेड लोग है पूरे डेडिकेटेड लोग और अब्दुल कलाम जी के लिए वो आप मानते हैं कि ट्रिब्यूट कलाम जी के लिए मैं वही तो बोल रहा था ना अब्दुल कलाम जी के लिए हमारे जो पूर्व राष्ट्रपति रहे आदरणीय कलाम जी के लिए वो ट्रिब्यूट है इट्स अ रियल ग्रेट थिंग देयर और उस क्षेत्र का समथिंग आउटस्टैंडिंग और आज मुझे लगता है अ डे विल कम दे विल मैच नासा आल्सो थैंक यू राकेश कुमार सिंह इंडिया न्यूज दिल्ली I have achieved nothing uh, today other than at least uh, create a little bit of buzz in parliament on why news x Uh, is uh, constantly asking about the space port and asking you know people to start focusing on it well then we 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 made a mark i'm hoping that's happened and your home and heart and your businesses and if you have kids studying then you're going to make them watch you know uh, case you know uh, dr somnath or case even interview and say you know this is what we can do and look at what these kids in pixel and bilatrix they i mean these guys are building their own rockets and their own satellites okay they're doing it this is not some theory this is not just uh, just the algorithms which we know we are good at this happening stuff is happening okay i promise you we are in in touch with uh, government of tamil nadu also uh, have been for the past 10 days and we will so- shortly be getting uh, members on board from the dmk uh, to have this conversation because last thing i want to do is have a politically one sided conversation but while we await that conversation both from the center and from the state governments Uh, we have uh, mr anna malai he is the president of the tamil nadu bjp joining us on the telecast to discuss the space port with us uh, mr anna malai thanks very much for joining us and sparing your time let me get straight into it tutikudi isro is building the space port as you are aware how important is this for you know both our dreams in space and for and for tamil nadu sir uh, this is a very important project that is coming up in uh, tutikudi in kolasekara patnam we are very happy that isro has considered uh, tamil nadu where they can have the second space port we all know our uh, only the major p- space port is in sri harikota and uh, sri harikota had some technical uh, issues when it comes to launching uh, uh, big vehicles now whatever we are given to understand uh, which isro has officially said also any space vehicle launched from uh, sri harikota has to fly over sri lanka and enter the polar orbit so to avoid flying over sri lanka they have to make a maneuver which consumes fuel because of which the payload carrying capacity of the vehicle comes down meaning we can't put larger satellites into it now in kulasekara patnam in thootukudi the second space port gives us an advantage technically geographically to do a straight launch into the polar orbit by which there is no maneuvering record anywhere 
by which we can place larger orbits uh, in, the, in the orbits we can place larger satellites and larger payload so we're very happy uh, Patnam not only will serve as a strategic advantage for ISRO but also importantly will help a lot of people to increase the payload when it gets launched from Sri Harikota. So okay. we welcome it. We are very happy that uh, it is okay. on the verge of completion and very soon our satellites will get launched from Kulasekar. Okay, so you know it's very heartening to see you know this happening uh, uh, in, 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 in Tamil Nadu specifically uh, where you are from sir. Uh, do you see the state emerging as you know a central pivot of our, of our space program and a space policy? You know we've seen the startups happening there, we've seen the work in IIT Madras, now the spaceport. Uh, and what do you feel has been done? You know, what would you hope happens next? You know, you know, for for the people of the state. Sir, we have to understand. Uh, even before this, the IFRO's propulsion complex is in Mahindragiri in uh, Tirunelveli district. That is also a very important center for ISRO. Now, secondly, the spaceport is coming up in Kolasekarapatnam, the neighboring district, Tutukodi. And Tamil Nadu, we all also know the defense corridor project is also in Tamil Nadu. Uh, only two states in India have got Uttar Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. So, according to center, in Atmanirbara Bharat and other things also, Tamil Nadu gets a prime importance in getting projects from the center. I am not talking about the regular budget. Even there also we do very well. Seven and a half lakh crore budget. Probably we are two, three and rank in the country. Apart from it, in the strategic sectors also, the contribution of Tamil Nadu is very high. Yes. And I am very happy ISRO's very important space probe Spaceport is also coming in Kolasekara Patnam in two Okay, no, without a doubt. It's, it's, it's great news. So, what, what can we do or what are you hoping to do, uh, uh, Mr. Anamalai, uh, to encourage, you know, uh, in terms of the academics, in terms of the engineering, in terms of the science, in terms of the entrepreneurship, in creating an ecosystem for space startups? What are you hopeful, uh, how that, uh, that ecosystem can be built and how, and how can you uh, contribute or your team contribute and the party contribute in creating that sort of ecosystem for startups there? Sir, you, you would have seen, you would have read also that many universities in Tamil Nadu have uh, made micro satellites and some of these micro satellites in the earlier projects have, uh, have been placed in the orbit as well. Some of our engineering colleges have laid a lot of emphasis on building this micro satellite. So, Tamil Nadu is becoming as a center where students are getting involved with ISRO in developing very specific projects for them. Some of our top engineering colleges, I don't want to name it because many engineering colleges are doing it. I am very sure this bond will, bond will get strengthened in the future, future years also. And Tamil Nadu, especially our higher institutes of learning, uh, will, 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 will collaborate more with ISRO, will, will, will transfer our technical know-how okay. and help ISRO in whatever. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, we, we some, sometimes get so consumed and yeah, then we're a democracy and there's always going to be active politics. But, you know, this is ISRO coming into, into Tamil Nadu and, you know, great things are happening. There's so much energy and talent which is being generated and so hopeful. Mr. Annamalai, you know, we'll, we'll hold you to your words, sir. Get, you know, get your team members excited about this. Let, let these be the political issues of the day of, you know, who's, you know, building the rockets and how much funding and how many startups are coming up and that's what the future is certainly uh, going to hold. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, on this telecast. That's not all. My, my Jammu Bureau is now getting involved. I think uh, we have Ajay, Ajay Jandial, is that right? Okay. Okay, he's catching up with Kavinder Gupta, now literally on the other side of the country. He's former Deputy Chief Minister of, of Jammu and Kashmir. Let's listen to this. Another good news for the people of country, especially for the youngsters, as uh, uh, the nation will have a new space port in the country, in the Tamil Nadu, and for that process uh, has begun. And we have with us Kavinder Gupta, former Deputy Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir, with us. Sir, how are you seeing a new space port in Tamil Nadu, like Shri Hari Kota? So, what are the great achievements and what are the benefits of the country and the youngsters? Look, the number one is for the country to be a new world, in the Pradhan Mantri Ji's nature, जो उन्होंने एक नारा दिया है तो उससे साफ लगता है कि हमें किसी पर डिपेंडेंट नहीं होना है और ख़ास करके ये जो स्पेस के काम होते हैं इसमें ये जो रक्षा मंत्रालय के साथ भी जुड़े होते हैं और इसके साथ ही साइंस टेक्नोलॉजी के साथ जुड़े होते हैं दूसरे देशों से इस प्रकार की सहायता लेनी पड़ती थी और एक जो सीक्रेसी थी वो भी कहीं ना कहीं उस पर लगाम लग सकती थी जैसे अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी के ज़माने में पोखरण का विस्फोट हुआ तो मुझे लगा है किसी को भी पता नहीं लगा इसलिए एक कुछ एक सिक्रेसी बहुत ज़रूरी है और ख़ास करके हमारे जो साइंटिस्ट जो बाहर जा कर के नासा में दूसरी जगह पर काम करते थे उनको भारत 
में ही काम करने का मौका मिलेगा अपने देश के लिए काम करने का मौका मिलेगा अच्छा कदम है और मुझे लगता है कि आने वाले समय में चाहे वो हथियारों के क्षेत्र में या रक्षा के क्षेत्र में या जो विमान बनते हैं साइंस के क्षेत्र में सभी जगह हम आत्मनिर्भर होने वाले हैं हमारी जो टेक्नोलॉजी है वो बाहर के देश अपनाएंगे ना कि हम बाहर के देशों की टेक्नोलॉजी अपनाएंगे कल्पना चावला का जब नाम आता है तो देश बड़ा गौरव फील करता है लगता है इसी तरह से कई युवा कल्पना जा, चावला जैसे राह पर चलेंगे हालांकि उनका जो आखिरी मिशन था वो पूरा नहीं हो पाया मगर जो देश के लिए बाकी मिशन है चाहे अलग अलग ग्रहों पे पहुंचने की बात है या वहाँ पर सेटेलाइट्स को छोड़ने की बात है उसमें एक बड़ी सक्सेस मिल जाएगी देखिए ना तो हिंदुस्तान में कोई टेलेंट की कमी है ना कोई पोटेंशल की कमी है इसलिए अपने जो युवा साइंटिस्ट हैं या दूसरे जो साइंटिस्ट हैं पुराने साइंटिस्ट का सहयोग लेकर के हम बहुत आगे बढ़ सकते हैं और आज इस क्षेत्र में जिस प्रकार से काम हो रहा है तो ये ज़रूरी है कि अपने ही देश में इस प्रकार की जो उपलब्धि जो उपलब्धि अगर कहीं करनी हो तो उसके लिए स्पेस मिलना चाहिए तो वाकई में जो एक अच्छा निर्णय तो जल्द इस पर काम भी होगा और जल्द इस पर भी आज, आज के टाइम में जो भी काम शुरू हो रहे हैं वो विद इन टाइम और टाइम बाउंड के हिसाब से जो हो रहे हैं तो निश्चय ही बहुत आगे भारत को विश्व में अपना नाम कमाने के लिए जम्मू कश्मीर के लिहाज से इसे कैसे देखते हैं यहाँ पे जो यंगस्टर हैं जो गलत राह पे चलते थे लगता है उनके लिए भी कहीं ना कहीं बहुत सारी ऑप्शंस मिलने वाली देखिए मेरा ये मानना है कि 1947 से लेकर के हमें एक नेशनलिज्म तो सिखाया ही नहीं गया अपने देश के लिए काम करना अपने देश में काम करना ये इस चीज़ की कहीं ना कहीं कमी रही और हम हमेशा यूरोप के या दूसरे देशों के गुण गाते रहे अमेरिका तक वो हमारी उस वक्त की सरकारों ने किया तो इसलिए बहुत ज़रूरी था कि खास करके जम्मू कश्मीर में भी जैसे लोग यहाँ पर प्रश्न चिन्ह लगा होता था कि यहाँ पर मिलिटेंसी है ये है और आने वाले समय में जब युवकों को इस प्रकार का एक अवसर मिलेगा तो मुझे लगता है कि किसी भी क्षेत्र में आगे जाने के लिए उनके पास जो स्पर्धा है उसमें वो आएंगे और आगे बढ़ेंगे so you can understand uh, because uh, especially if you talk about the jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir had seen a lot of blood lot of uh, you know chaos because of the terrorism uh, here but uh, now after jammu uh, after the country is getting uh, going to get this uh, space port uh, the in the tamil nadu uh, definitely the people of jammu and kashmir and the youngster will be able to get more options to grow with the nation and with the world with anish kumar ajay jindal news x jam okay ladies and gentlemen uh you know i'm hoping that over the course of what was meant to be 2 hours but has become 2 and a half hours and i promise you that you know this is just the beginning okay there are so many stories to tell stories of the past uh, from thumba outside uh, thiruvananthapuram in kerala where sara bhai and kalam launched india's first rocket in 63 uh, to sri hari kota where the you know satish dhawan space center uh, and now in tamil nadu in tuthikodi district okay right here in kulasekara patanam remember that name now if you are out there okay if you work in the banking and insurance sec- sector think about the emerging space companies that are going to be worth billions of dollars and will require your services if you are a, i don't know a construction firm or a builder think about kulasekara patanam in tamil nadu where a massive 2 and 1/2 thousand acre port has to be developed with a city and infrastructure internet water electricity all of that has to be put up tamil nadu also already has remember one of the world's Asia, world's largest solar power parks they they have one in gujarat and one uh, one in tamil nadu uh, so green energy you know providing pr- providing uh, something which is on high tech research if you are a student or an academician or a, or, a, or an entrepreneur think on both ways one is a potential opportunity for you right here in india okay trillion dollar sector on the other side what can you benefit from the technology once these satellites get into space and they're already you you heard the pixel guys they've already started putting them into space this is not some theory that or oh, 10 years later 30 years later you know things that we were stuck in the past you know when we couldn't build a plane we couldn't build a battle tank all those days are gone okay so get involved get excited i began this telecast by saying and quoting vikram sarabhai those who can listen to music in the midst of noise can do great things 
we have tried here to shut out the noise. I know it is also important and who's saying what and who tweeted what and which controversy here and that. But somewhere we lose the mission, which is all of us. We are Team India and all of this, okay? The small things honestly don't matter. The real golden age of India was not just during Ashoka and the Mauryas. The real golden age is this gener generation right here, right now. It is yet to come. Whether you hear the words of Gandhi or Nehru saying that we should be giving ourselves to the service of India and her people or a Narendra Modi talking about a new India and a 25 year vision or the 75th anniversary of our nation's independence. This country is going places. Be part of that journey. Thank you. We take a break. See you in a minute. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.